Get ready to elevate your home this fall with 100 dazzling high-end DIY projects. From thrift flips to dupes and trash to treasure, we've got you covered with the most amazing fall home decor inspiration you need. We're gonna start off with a super simple project. We are going to take some pumpkins that are pretty plain and we're gonna turn them into some show stopping decor pieces. My inspiration began on a trip to Hobby Lobby. They had all of their beautiful fall items out and the week that I went, it happened to be 40% off all of the fall decor pieces, which was so lucky for me. I picked up several velvet pumpkins in a variety of shapes and colors. I chose ivory, champagne, and some gold pumpkins in a small and medium size. I love how neutral these colors are, but they were a little plain, and so we're going to take them to the next level by adding some embellishments. I picked up some floral lace and some trim at Hobby Lobby, and it was also on sale. So I got a yard of each of these trim pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to wrap it around the base of the stem. To hold the lace in place, I'm going to be using a corsage pin. These are beautiful because it has a pearl which matches with the lace detail. And also, because I'm using a corsage pin, it's not going to be a permanent fix. I can take these lace pieces off if I wanted to later on and just have my plain pumpkin once again. About every half inch, I added a corsage pin. I just poked it through the lace and into the soft, pillowy, beanbag pumpkin and it held it right in place. So I continued to do this until the lace was all around the base of the stem. Now, once I got done adding the lace, I looked at the stem and it was really green. It was too green. And so we needed to tone that down just a little bit. So what I did was I got some rub and buff and a tissue, and I just simply rubbed this gold rub and buff on the stem, which toned down that green stem and the gold will now coordinate with the other stems that are on my other pumpkins. The addition of this gold highlight was just what this pumpkin stem needed to upgrade the entire look of the pumpkin. So now that we have this pretty pumpkin all decked out, we're going to move on to our second pumpkin. Now on this pumpkin, what I did was I took that floral trim and what I did with this was I cut a segment of three flowers. Then I got my corsage pin, poked it through the top of the ribbon and then pressed it into my pumpkin. My next segment consisted of two flowers. I did the same thing. I put my corsage pin through the top and then straight into the pumpkin. Then I simply repeated this process of cutting the three segments of flowers, adding them to the pumpkin, cutting the two segments of flower, adding them to the pumpkin until the entire top of the pumpkin had been covered in these beautiful floral trim pieces. Now I have to admit, I absolutely love the way that this pumpkin turned out. Oh, these dainty little floral pieces. It's just what this needed. It's so feminine and the detail enhances the beauty of this pumpkin. Now that we have our big pumpkins beautified, we are going to move on to our mini pumpkins. I had some leftover trim of these beautiful florals and I just added a singular flower to each of my mini pumpkins. I poked the corsage pin through the center of the flower right where the pearls are clustered and then poked it straight into my pumpkin. I think this one little flower is just enough detail for these little pumpkins. It does not overwhelm them because they are small, but the additional trim coordinates all of my pumpkins together and gives it that additional detail that these pumpkins needed. Easy, affordable, Anyone can do this. And all we did was we just took some trim and we added it to a pumpkin just to make it pretty and custom. I love the way these look. These are perfect for my tablescape. I love Poor Chow. I love scrolling through their website. They have beautiful pieces, but they are so expensive. 
So I found this piece on their website. It's simply gorgeous. I love the fall color palette of peaches, oranges, and reds, and the linear shape is so unique and special. What I am not in love with is the price of $650. I'm not gonna spend $650 on a flower arrangement. So we are going to make this piece ourselves. The first thing that we need is a similar container. So let's head on upstairs and a look through my armoire. I have a whole bunch of options in here, lots of glass vases. Let's rummage around. Let's go with this rectangular container. It's a perfect knockoff to our original piece. Now that we have selected our container, we need to get our florals and some sticks. Instead of buying sticks, uh, let's head on outside and see what we can find out in the bushes. I found some fantastic sized sticks that were absolutely perfect for this arrangement. And the best part is that they're free. So I brought those inside and now I can lay out all of my florals. I got a whole bunch of options and I laid them out on my desk in my office. I love to do this because then I can really see what I have, what is similar to my inspiration piece. I can see the colors that I have so I can make a game plan before I even start. Another piece to this flower arrangement that I did not have was these little blueberries. So I'm going to improvise and make my own. I had some gold berries left over from decorating at Christmas time. And I thought these are the perfect size and shape. All I need to do is change the color. So I got some craft paint and a paintbrush, and I simply just painted these gold berries into blueberries. I painted all the berries, made sure they were completely covered in this craft paint, and then I let them dry for several hours. Sometimes you have to improvise just a little bit in order to get the perfect piece, and I think we did that with these berries. Now we're going to create a tape grid on the top of my face. So I got some scotch tape and I did a couple of lines of scotch tape vertically and then one right down the center. I love using the tape grid method because it will hold your flowers in place and you won't have to worry about using floral foam. From here on out, we are just gonna take the florals that we selected and put them into our tape grid in similar places as our inspiration piece. If you're a novice floral arranger, copying a piece you love is an easy place to start. First, because you already know you love the floral arrangement, and second, all you have to do is put the flowers in the exact same spot as the inspiration piece. My florals that I'm using are from various places. They're from the Dollar Tree. I got the artichoke stems at At Home. And then I also got some flowers at Michael's. So I didn't spend a whole lot of money originally on the flowers to begin with. And here is our final floral arrangement. Look at how gorgeous this is. Let's put my piece up next to our inspiration piece. I would say that they are so similar. My next high-end dupe comes from another very high-end store, and that is Paragold. I found this beautiful floral tray. It's got lucite and flowers, and it's just stunning. What's not stunning is the price. It's $304. We can do better. I know that we can save ourselves a lot of money by making this ourselves. So the first thing that I needed to do was find a lucite tray that was similar to our inspiration piece. So I went on a little shopping trip to Target and they had a lucite tray that was identical. And the best part is that it was on sale for only $3. I love a good bargain. So I scooped this up and I brought it home. I purchased a book of fall cardstock at Michael's for $10. And inside of this book of cardstock, I found a gorgeous floral cardstock. It had some jewel toned flowers and some acorns. So pretty. So 
it's not going to be 100% identical to our inspiration piece because we are theming this tray into fall, but we are using the spirit of our inspiration piece to help us to create this tray. So what I did with my paper was I needed to trim it up just a little bit so it would fit inside the tray. I got my rotary tool and I trimmed off the edges of two sides of my paper. So now it can fit into my tray perfectly. And I always like to do a dry run just to make sure that it fits in there nicely. Now that my paper is cut perfectly, I'm going to get out some Mod Podge. I put a layer of Mod Podge on the bottom of the tray. I made sure that the entire tray was completely covered in the Mod Podge. Then I got out my beautiful fall paper and I placed it right over the top of the Mod Podge. I got a kitchen scraper and I pressed that paper firmly to the bottom of the tray using the kitchen scraper will press out any air bubbles that were potentially trapped underneath the paper and it will help it to lay flat. Next, I take more Mod Podge and I spread a layer over the top of the paper. I made sure that the surface of this paper was completely covered in the Mod Podge and then I let it dry overnight. Isn't this tray just stunning? I love the fall florals in the bottom with the leaves and the acorns is so pretty and it was so easy to do. If you're looking to create some easy custom fall pieces, this is the project for you. It was a piece of cake. Let's find out how much I spent on my tray. As you saw, the tray itself was only $3 at Target. And the book of cardstock was $10 for the whole book. If you break it down, each piece of cardstock is 25 cents. So for me to create this custom fall tray, it was $3 and 25 cents. I will remind you that our inspiration piece was $304. So we saved ourselves a ton of money and we created a beautiful piece. also a great place to find custom pieces of home decor. I was scrolling the other day and I found this adorable kitchen towel, this Hello Fall towel that had a cute little pumpkin on it. The cost of this kitchen towel is $15, which isn't bad, but I know that we can create a similar one for less. Now what struck me as I was scrolling was the actual fabric of this kitchen towel. A light bulb went on and I thought, you know what? I think I have some similar fabric in my scrap fabric bin upstairs. So I went upstairs and I rummaged through and I found this gingham fabric that is an identical match to our inspiration piece. How lucky was that? So what I did with my scrap fabric was I had to trim up the edges. So I simply just squared up the edges so I had a long rectangle. At this point, I needed to hem those edges. So I pulled out my sewing machine and I pinned the edges and I simply sewed a straight hem along the raw edges. How easy was that? Now I have a kitchen towel. Now I'm going to be using my inspiration piece as just that inspiration. I liked the pumpkin on there and the wording, but I think we can do better. So what I did was in my Cricut design space, I created a pumpkin, a stem and happy fall. And then my Cricut maker cut it out onto some smart iron on vinyl. I weeded away all of the excess vinyl to reveal my designs. And then I placed the vinyl in the center of the kitchen towel. I got my easy press, placed it over the top of the vinyl and let it set there for 30 seconds. Once it was all finished, I removed the protective plastic covering over the vinyl. And now I have this adorable, happy fall pumpkin kitchen towel. Look at this adorable kitchen towel, you guys. Oh my goodness, I love it so, so much. You know what? I think I even love it more than my inspiration piece. Now let's take my towel and put it right up against 
the Inspiration kitchen towel. What do you think? Was it a good dupe? I think it's a pretty good dupe. And how fun is this going to be to have in my kitchen as a subtle decor piece? It's going to be so beautiful to have out during this autumn season. Now, my kitchen towel cost me hardly any money because I used things around the house that I already had. This was scrap material that I just sewed into a kitchen towel. So that's not gonna cost me any money. The vinyl will say, I didn't use that much, so we'll say that it cost me around $2. So for me to create this kitchen towel, it was $2. Our inspiration piece was 15, so we did save some money, but I do think that I like mine better. start off with our pumpkins. Now I got this white pumpkin, this cream white pumpkin. Oh, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago at my thrift store. I love the size of this pumpkin and the shape, the color. There's so many positive things about this pumpkin. One thing that I did not love was the stem. The stem is brown and it definitely needs to be jazzed up. The accent color to my blue and white display is going to be gold. So we're gonna change the stem to gold. And we're gonna do it with some rub and buff. I got a tissue, I added a little bit of the rub and buff to the tissue, and then I put it all over the stem. I've covered up the original brown color with the gold rub and buff, and it already looks so much more expensive. The gold takes this pumpkin to the next level. Now that we have changed the stem on our gold thrifted pumpkin, we are going to move on to these velvet plush pumpkins. Now I used these pumpkins last week in my foyer display. I purchased them at Hobby Lobby. I liked them so much. I went back and I got two more and the, luckily they were still on sale. They were 40% off. So I picked up two more so I could have some coordinating pumpkins for my mantle. Again, the stem was too green. It's an easy fix. Again, I just got out that gold rub and buff and a tissue. I covered the pumpkin stems in the rub and buff. Once the first pumpkin was finished, I moved on to the second pumpkin and I did the exact same thing. I love how this rub and buff transforms these pumpkins. Uh, one nice thing about the rub and buff is that you don't have to wait for it to dry. It dries immediately, so we are finished with these stems, a lickety split, and I just love the way that they turned out. Now that we're completed with our stems, we are going to move on to some more pretty embellishments. Now I picked up these sparkling shapes, that's what they're called, at Tuesday morning. I got two packages, they were only $2.49. I wasn't in love with the color scheme of these little sparkling shapes, but that's okay, that's a super easy fix. So what I want to use out of these shapes are just the leaves. So I took my leaves outside, I put them on some cardboard, and I'm going to spray paint them in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed the first side in the gold spray paint. I made sure that the leaves were completely covered in the paint. I got the sides of the leaves as well. And once they were completely coated, I let them dry for one hour. I came back, I flipped all the leaves over and I spray painted the top side. I made sure that everything was completely covered in the paint. And then I let these leaves dry for another hour. Super easy fix, but look at how classy these leaves are. These are going to be such a beautiful addition to my display. They're small, subtle, but they are going to be so impactful. Since we're doing a blue and white display, I wanted to make sure that we had enough blue. So I'm gonna incorporate some more blue in the form of some ribbons. I purchased this royal blue ribbon at the Dollar Tree. It's the perfect shade of blue, and I love the satin sheen. I tied this blue ribbon into a bow, and then I cut the tails straight across. Then I took one of my gold leaves. I added some hot glue to the top stem portion of the leaf, and then I pressed it right onto the end of the ribbon. 
Then I did the exact same thing on the other side of the ribbon. I took a leaf, I added the hot glue to the top portion of the leaf, and then I pressed it onto the end of the ribbon. I love the embellishment of these gold leaves. They are so subtle and it's a perfect touch that elevates the look of these ribbons. Now, when I made over my pumpkins in my last video for my foyer, I used some trim that I got at Hobby Lobby and I secured it to my pumpkins with some corsage pins. Well, we're gonna use some corsage pins again today. I took my corsage pin and I pressed it through the center knot on my ribbon and then I poked it straight into the top of the pumpkin at the base of the stem. And that's it. Look at how fantastic this looks. It was so easy to do. All we did is we changed the color of the stem, we added the ribbon, and then we put these pretty little, yeah, these pretty little gold leaves on the end of the tails. Easy, simple, but wow, it really jazzed up this pumpkin. It makes it look so much more custom, and I just am thrilled with the way that it looks. Now we're going to move on to our tall mercury glass candlesticks. I got these candlesticks a few years ago at Home Goods. They are so pretty and I love using them as often as I can because they are so tall and they make a fantastic statement. To customize these candlesticks into our fall season, we are going to be doing the same thing as we did on our pumpkin. So I took a segment of this ribbon and again, I added some hot glue to the top portion of the gold leaf and then I pressed it straight onto the end of the ribbon. Once all my leaves were on the tails of my ribbons, I simply just wrapped this ribbon around the neck of the candlestick and I tied it into a bow. You don't have to make a huge effort to customize pieces that you already have at home into seasonal pieces. This is a great example of how I took something that I have and by adding a small embellishment to it, it now customized it color-wise and seasonally. Now that the majority of our DIYs are completed, we are going to start decorating our mantle. We're going to start off with a garland. I purchased this gold magnolia garland last year at Michael's after Christmas. It was 70% off. So I think I paid like $6 for this. I picked up a couple of them. And as you can see, it has like a little ring at the ends on both ends. So I have a screw on either end of my fireplace. Now I had to screw in a screw because my Christmas garlands are really heavy and in the past they pulled off the command hooks. So I had to make a permanent solution. So I do have screws. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to put it right there on this one, on the right hand side. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right over there on the left hand side. And then I'm going to take the center. In the center, I have a command hook and I'm going to just bring it right up to the command hook. Okay. So our garland is in place. Next, we're going to move on to our pumpkins. We're going to get our big one first. Oops. So we have our big pumpkin and we're going to put it right in the center. Okay. Next, I have some blue plush pumpkins. I purchased these last year at Home Goods. These are so pretty and they're perfect for our color scheme. They're gonna go on either side of my white pumpkin. All right, next we're gonna put our large candlesticks on either side. Up next, we're gonna put our cream colored pumpkins right in between the blue pumpkin and our candlestick. 
Gonna put those on either side. Now that our big pieces are in place, we're going to go through and we're just going to make it feel lush and full by adding some extra leaves. Now I did buy two of these magnolia garlands and what I'm going to do with the second garland is I'm just going to pull the leaves right off the garland portion. So now I have all these leaves and I'm just going to fill in the garland to make it feel bountiful. one final DIY that we're going to do. Again, it involves those gold mini leaves. I wanted them to hang from my garland and I wanted to do it in a mysterious way. So we're going to use some fishy line. I cut a segment of fishy line and I added some hot glue to the back of the leaves. I put that fishy line right in the hot glue and I let it dry. Now I'm going to attach my gold fishy line leaves to my garland. It's super simple. All I'm going to do is just tie it around one of the leaves on the garland. And once I'm done, I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and snip off the excess fishing line. My final addition is to add these antler picks. I'm just gonna put them in between the pumpkins. I'm just gonna lay them right in. It will hold it in place, it'll stay in place. Just nestle it in different places throughout the mantelscape. And I really love the way that the antlers, because they're so rustic and everything else is pretty pristine, it adds that fall element. And again, the white antlers are perfect because it goes along with our blue and white color scheme. All right, you guys, I think that we are finished. And I absolutely love the way that this mantelscape turned out. The pumpkins are so pretty, especially with the newly updated stems and the ribbon. The gold garland is just such a pretty touch, especially with these little leaves that are just hovering magically. They look like leaves just falling off of trees blowing in the wind. I just love the way that they look. The candlesticks are so perfect. On top, I have some battery operated candles that will turn on every night to give this space a nice warm glow. Another thing that I really like is that this display is not over the top. It's very subtle and it's very neutral. I love the timeless blue and white color scheme. And another reason why I chose this color scheme is because I already have out my blue and white ginger jars and I have some white floral arrangements so everything coordinates beautifully together. All of these pieces were easy and affordable to create and yet my mantle looks high-end and expensive. Plastic, clear, Dollar Tree bowl and give it a makeover. To begin, I'm using some foam stickers that I got in a grab bag last fall. Now, I never thought I would use kid stickers to create an elegant design, but today is that day. So I took these stickers and I removed the paper on the back. Then I placed these stickers in a flower design. I actually used that vacant space where I pulled the stickers out as a template. So I put those floral petals right back into the space where I originally had removed them. By doing this, I can ensure my petals are evenly spaced. If I was adding the stickers to my bowl freehand, it would be crooked in a minute. So this is a great method to help keep everything straight. For some added detail, I took the small centers I had poked out of the petal and placed them around to create a starburst effect. So in this package of foam stickers were some leaves. 
they did not have the sticky backing so I needed to create my own sticky backing and I did that with some double-sided tape. I put a few pieces on the back side of my foam leaf and then I pressed them in the spaces between the florals on my bowl. Now that my design is all set, I'm going to paint the inside of the bowl. I'm gonna use some Valspar Mirror Mirror spray paint. I got this at Target. I sprayed the inside of the bowl. I made sure it was well coated, especially where the stickers were located. I let this dry, which only took 10 minutes. It was really quick. I flipped that bowl over and then I used some gold metallic Rust-Oleum spray paint for the outside. I sprayed the paint evenly and carefully and I made sure that the bowl was completely covered in paint, especially around the stickers. This way I'll end up with sharp, crisp lines. Once the gold paint was completely dry, it was time to remove the stickers. I began to pull the stickers away from the bowl and I was so excited. It looks so cool. The mirror paint is so shiny and I love the contrast between the gold paint and the metallic silver on the floral leaf design. As you can see, I put in some beautiful ball florals in my bowl. You could add some mini pumpkins or some acorns. Everyone that sees this bowl thinks that it's either glass or metal. And they're shocked when I tell them that it's simply a clear plastic Dollar Tree bowl that got a makeover with a little bit of paint and some ball stickers. I'm feeling like going on a little treasure hunt and the best place to do that is at my thrift store. So what do you think? You wanna go on a shopping trip with me? Let's go. some treasures you guys now I know they look like doozies right now but trust me they all have potential and we're gonna start off with the most stunning in my opinion transformation but it's also the most difficult why because typically when I do my thrift flips I like to reimagine these pieces or embellish them but this time we are taking a piece and we are doing a reverse flip and we are taking it back to its natural state. This cheese board and cloche was from my thrift store and it was $5.99. This little cloche is already decorated to the hilt with butterflies and flowers and grass and there's a cute little sunshine on the top. It looks like somebody's darling little daughter or niece or granddaughter just went to town and used her most creative painting skills. We are going to be removing the paint from the glass cloche and bringing it back to its original state. Now, because this glass cloche and cheese board is going to be used with food, I wanted to do it in the most natural way possible. I did not want to use harsh chemicals to remove this paint. So we are going to be trying out a little hack together. I've never done this before, so let's keep our fingers crossed that it works. What you're gonna need is some vinegar, just plain vinegar. I got a measuring cup and I measured out one cup of vinegar and I heated it up in the microwave for 60 seconds. I took my glass cloche outside and I put it on top of a old cookie sheet. You don't need anything new. You might wanna use something that could possibly get ruined. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I also have some gloves on, some plastic gloves because safety first. So I took this hot vinegar and I poured it over the glass cloche and then I also got a sponge brush and I sponged the hot vinegar onto the painted areas. Then I got a few paper towels and I put those over the cloche and then added some more vinegar. This will hold the vinegar onto the glass while we wait. And I waited for about 20 minutes to let this vinegar soak in as best as it could to the paint. After the 20 minutes was up, I removed the paper towels and I got a razor blade and I began to scrape off the paint. To my amazement, this vinegar hack worked and the paint started to come off. 
So I just continued to scrape the paint off with this razor blade. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, it took me about 45 minutes to scrape all this paint off. So it did take some effort to get it off, but the good news is, is that the paint did come off. And I was happy that we were able to do it in a natural way without the use of any harsh chemicals. In this particular instance, bringing the cloche back to its original state was just as impactful as embellishing it or turning it into something else. But we're not done yet. We are going to be theming this cloche into fall. So we're gonna create some mini pumpkins from some Dollar Tree wood slices. I took my drill and I drilled a hole in the top of each one of these wood slices. I added a dab of hot glue into the hole. Then I pressed a little stick that I had gotten outside. Then I took some stems of leaves and I hot glued the leaves to the top of the pumpkin. How cute and adorable are these little pumpkins? And they were such a piece of cake to make. Now I'm gonna take my two pumpkins and I'm going to hot glue them onto the ends of a segment of ribbon. This ribbon is so pretty. It's green and it's got some gold stripes through it. I added some hot glue to the end of the ribbon and I pressed my pumpkin right onto the glue. I did that on both sides of the ribbon. Then I took this ribbon and I tied it around the top knob on the cloche and let those cute little pumpkins hang down. I mean, how adorable is this? Wouldn't this be so fun to put out during a fall party? You could put some cheese under the cloche and you could have everybody just slice the little piece of cheese that they want that would fit perfectly on their cracker. What a fun and interactive way to have food set out at a party. And because we did a reverse flip on this piece, we are able to use it for any themed party or any season because it's a neutral piece. Now let's flip our shadow box frame. This shadow box has seen a better day. It's pretty beat up. It's got some wood splinters and some dings all over the frame. It's a little weathered. And yes, we do love to live and laugh, but we are going to remove those rocks from the shadow box and put something even better inside. And the price was only $2.99, which is fantastic. I got a sanding sponge and I began to sand down all of the splinters that were along the frame to make it smooth. And then I cleaned the frame with a damp, clean cloth. Because it is a shadow box, there is about a half inch piece of wood along the inside of the frame, so I'm not able to take out the glass. So what I am going to do is get a piece of copy paper and some blue painter's tape. I put the paper down in the center, and then I put the blue painter's tape along the edges of the frame, which will protect the glass and hold the paper in place. Then I took my frame outside and I sprayed it in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I got along all the edges of the frame and on the inside corner. Then I let it dry for 30 minutes. I sprayed on a second coat. Again, I made sure that the frame was completely saturated in the white spray paint. And then I let it dry, which took one hour. I have a really fun event coming up this weekend. I'm hosting a baby shower. So we are going to theme the contents that we're putting into our shadow box into fall with a little bit of a baby boy spin on it. So I created this welcome little pumpkin printable. Now, if you want it, you can have it. If you're gonna have a baby shower, this would be so cute to print off and have. So I will leave a link to this free printable in my description box so you can print it off at home and have it for yourself. But what I did was I printed it off and then I just trimmed up the size to get it the correct size so I could put it inside of my shadow box. Next, we are going to be making some mini paper pumpkins to go inside of our shadow box. I got some blue polka dot paper and I cut some pieces that were three inches by two inches. And then I got some green striped paper Again, I cut some rectangular pieces that were three inches by two inches. You are going to need three of these pieces per pumpkin. I took these rectangular cardstock pieces 
and I folded them back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to create an accordion. Then I folded each accordion piece in half to create a fan. I got some hot glue and I hot glued the inside edges together. Then I took my three folded fans and I put them together to form a circle. I got hot glue and I hot glued the edges of each of the fans and I put them together to form a circle. I wanted to create a, another circle that went in the center of our circles. So all I had to do was half the size of the rectangles. So these smaller rectangles are a one and a half inch by one inch rectangle. I repeated the same process. I folded those three pieces of cardstock to look like accordions. Then I folded them in half, hot glued the inside edges together, and then took my three fans and hot glued them together to create a circle. Now we have formed all of our circles. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some hot glue on the back of my mini circles and place them right in the center of the larger circles. To hide the little circle in the center, I got some buttons. This little jar of buttons is from the Dollar Tree. I just pulled out some little ones that coordinated with the color scheme I was going for. I added some hot glue to the back of these buttons and then I just put them right in the center of our circles. Now we're gonna make some stems and some leaves to go at the top of our pumpkin. We're gonna start off with the leaves. I took some green cardstock and I folded it three times. Then I cut a leaf shape out of the cardstock because I folded it, it will create three identical leaves. For our pumpkin stems, I'm just using some sticks that I got outside. I added some hot glue to the bottom of the stick and I placed it right in one of the folds of the accordion. Then I got my leaf and I added some hot glue to the bottom of the leaf and I placed that at the top of my pumpkin. I then repeated the same process with the remaining two pumpkins. I arranged these pumpkins at the bottom of my Welcome little pumpkin printable. Then I got some hot glue and I hot glued the back of the pumpkins and pressed them onto the bottom of the pumpkin printable. Now it's time to put everything back into our shadow box. But first we have to say goodbye to the live and laugh rocks. So I pulled those off and now I have just a plain mat. So I scooted my little printable over the top of this mat. Then I got some double-sided tape, which secured the mat and the paper together. Next, I took my shadow box frame and I placed it over the top of the printable. I flipped it around and secured everything back together. What a great transformation, this shadow box. It was pretty sad when we first found it, but I think that we have flipped it into something completely different. And I absolutely love the contents that we put inside. I love that this is themed fall, but it's also themed for a baby shower. This is something that you could do at home. Instead of saying, welcome little pumpkin, you could say, welcome fall, happy fall, harvest, whatever, but you could still create some mini pumpkins and put it inside of a shadow box, which would definitely theme them into this autumn season. In the seasonal section of the thrift store, I came across this pumpkin gourd candle holder and I just thought it was absolutely adorable. So I scooped it up and brought it home. Now the price of this candle holder is only $2.99, which is perfect. What we're gonna do with this little candle holder is we are going to paint it white. But before we do that, we need to tape off the leaf and the stem because I don't want that to be white. So I got some blue painter's tape and I just simply protected the leaf and the stem with this blue painter's tape. Then I took this candle holder outside and I sprayed it in the white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that I painted every part of this candle holder. Once I was finished with the first coat, I let it dry for 30 minutes. Then I came back and did a second coat to make sure that the candle holder was completely saturated in this white spray paint and then I let it dry for one hour. Once the paint had dried, I removed the blue painter's tape from off of the stem and the leaf. And then I took some gold rub and buff 
and a tissue. I added a little bit of this rub and buff to the tissue and then I wiped it on the surface of the leaf and onto the stem. I did the top and the bottom of this leaf and I made sure that it was coated in this gold rub and buff. To embellish it even further, we are going to add some flowers to the center of our candle holder. So we are going to use our imagination just a little bit instead of using candles, we're going to add some flowers to it. So I got some floral foam and I cut it into fourths. I pressed the floral foam into the circles that were meant for candles. Then I took several stems of flowers. I have some white roses and some blue autumn hydrangeas and some other fall florals and I pressed the flowers into the foam which will hold them in place. Once I had all of my flowers arranged to where I wanted them to be, I added some gold leaves and then some regular old green leaves. It's so pretty now with these florals inside. I just absolutely love the way it looks. And you could leave it just like this, but like I said, we're having our baby shower, so I needed to add one more additional detail. I got a chalkboard pick and a chalk marker and I wrote, oh boy, and then I pressed it into the foam. I am so thrilled with the transformation on this candle holder. It's so cute and it was really easy to do. All we did was repaint it in a different color. It really refreshed this piece. And then we reimagined the contents of the inside. Instead of putting candles, we put flowers. I am so thrilled with the way that all of our thrift flips turned out today. They were shockingly easy and the transformations are stunning. One of my favorite places to shop is Home Goods. I can spend ridiculous amounts of time there, just wandering up and down the aisles, smelling candles and looking at pretty things. Well, I was there the other day and I saw this really pretty fall swag. I loved the white pumpkins and thought the green leaves were a unique spin off the traditional orange and amber leaves. It also had some pretty pearls and gems on it. I looked at the price. It was $29.99, which isn't bad, but I knew that I could create a similar piece for less. To start off making my swag, I needed some branches. Now, the easiest and most affordable way to do this is just to wander about in your neighborhood and find some sticks, which is what I did last Christmas time. I found some branches and I spray painted them gold. This isn't gonna cost me anything, plus I got a lovely nature walk out of it. So I'm going to arrange my sticks pointing outward. I got some floral wire and I cut a few segments I wrapped it around several points along the swag. The floral wire will hold the branches in place. To fill in the gaps and make the swag feel a little more lush, I decided to add a few more thin sticks. I found two bundles at the Dollar Tree. I unwrapped them. I only needed the stick portion, so I put the dry green flowers to the side. I positioned the sticks over the top of the gold sticks. Then I took more of that floral wire, wrapped it around these twigs to securely keep them in place. I added the thin sticks to both sides of my swag. Now for the greenery. I really did love how the original inspiration piece had a lighter and brighter palette. The light green leaves make it feel so much more bright and cheerful. I purchased a few stems at Michael's. Luckily, they were 40% off, so I ended up only spending $10.05 on these two stems. I took my first stem and I bent it into three distinct sections. I placed it on the top of my swag and then I secured it to the branch swag with the floral wire. For my second stem of greenery, I actually got some wire cutters and I cut off a few of the smaller branches off of the center piece. I took the shorter pieces and I placed them inside of the swag. Then I took the remaining large center stem and I bent that as well 
into several different directions and then I placed it on top of the swag, again, securing it all together with that floral wire. So now that the actual swag portion is completed, now it's time to add in all of the pretty things. We're gonna start off by adding these white and cream pumpkins. Now in my inspiration piece, they have those white and cream pumpkins. The difference is these Dollar Tree pumpkins had some brown stems. I didn't want them to be brown, I wanted them to be gold. So I took those stems and I just yanked them right out of the pumpkin. Then I poked these stems inside of a plastic cup. That way they would stay upright while I was painting them in some gold rust spray paint. I painted on a thorough coat of paint, making sure that every part of the stem was covered then I let them dry for one hour. Once they were dry, I simply took those stems and I poked them right back into the original hole at the top of the pumpkin. Simply painting these stems gold made a huge difference. It's so much more impactful and it looks so much more high-end. I also have this cream pumpkin already in my stash, so that's not gonna cost me any additional money. To attach the pumpkins to my swag, I'm going to take a segment of that floral wire. I'm going to bend it in half, add a dab of hot glue to the bottom of the pumpkin, and then place the center of the floral wire in the hot glue. Now I can place my pumpkins on my swag. I decided to do two on the left and right that were the white ones and then the cream one in the center. So I just took that floral wire, I wrapped it around some of the branches that were on the swag, and then I twisted the wire together. My inspiration piece had some pine cones on them. They were just plain. I have some pine cones that I've decorated with for Christmas. My pine cones have white tips, which I like better than the plain pine cones because it ties in with the white pumpkin. I am going to attach these pine cones to my swag with that same floral wire. I'm going to take a segment and I'm going to wrap it around the bottom layer of the pine cone needles and then twist the wire together. Once each one of my pine cones had a wire wrapped around the bottom needles, I was able to place them on my swag. Again, I simply located the branch on my swag, wrapped the wire around the branch and twisted the wires together to secure it to the swag. Lastly, we're going to create these pretty pearl and crystal picks. I got a bag of pearl beads at the Dollar Tree, and I also had some crystal base fillers already at home. Once again, the hero of the day is that floral wire. We have used it throughout this entire thing, so why not use it to make these as well? So I took a segment of this floral wire and I poked it through the center of the pearl bead, wrapped it around it, and then twisted to secure it together. Once I had all the pearls on, I moved on to the glass base fillers. I got some hot glue. I added it to my glass bead and then pressed it onto the wire. To attach my pretty pearl and crystal accents to my swag, I'm going to take that wire, wrap it around a branch, and then twist the wires together. So here is my final swag. It's a pretty good dupe, right? I think we did a great job in recreating what I saw at Home Goods. Now we did customize it a little bit. The pine cones had the white accent on the tips and I did have some gold branches, but besides that, I think it's a pretty good match to the original. Now let's go over the cost and find out how much it cost me to make my swag and how much we saved. So if you remember the original price on the home goods swag was $29.99. I didn't have to purchase very many things to create mine. So the money that I did spend was on the leaves that I purchased at Michael's, 
the two stamps were ten dollars and five cents and so we're gonna round that down to ten dollars it's just easier to do math that way so ten dollars for the greenery and the rest of the things i purchased were from the dollar tree i got the two velvet pumpkins i got the bag of pearls and then i also got the two bundles of those thin sticks so that cost me five dollars at the dollar tree so in total this swag cost me out of pocket fifteen dollars that is a 50 percent off savings from our home goods inspiration piece what can i say i love a good bargain let's move on to home goods dupe number two this time i'm going to purchase a piece at home goods and use it to recreate a much more expensive piece that I saw online. I bought this yellow ginger jar at, of course, Home Goods. It was $19.99. I absolutely love the shape and the size of this ginger jar. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right and it has the perfect amount of detail. My inspiration piece is this white ginger jar with a gold accent. It's roughly the same size, but the big difference is the price. This one costs $109. Now that's pretty pricey. So why don't we try and make it for less? The first thing that we're gonna do is take our bright yellow ginger jar and we're going to paint it. I got a white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. The reason I'm using this particular paint is because it's a paint plus primer. So that way when I spray paint my piece, it will ensure that that bright yellow color will be covered up. So once the jar and the lid had been completely covered in the first coat of paint, I let it dry for one hour. Then I sprayed on a second coat of paint. Again, I made sure that every part of the jar and the lid was covered in the white paint. Once it was completely painted, I let it dry for three hours. Now, there are several options that we could have used to create this stripe around the edge. I could have used some Cricut vinyl. I could have painted it on with some gold craft paint. But in the end, what I decided to do was to use some gold washi tape. I purchased this washi tape at Target. I placed the tape on my jar and then pulled it tightly to create a straight line. It is also important to press the jar with your finger as you're laying it down. This will get rid of any air bubbles. I wrapped the gold washi tape around the circumference of my jar and then cut the tape once I got to the original starting point. Because there's curved edges on my jar, the tape did tend to ripple up just a little bit along these curved edges. So my solution was to take my Cricut scraper tool and to press the air bubbles out of the corners. By using the scraper tool, I was able to get all of the air bubbles out to press the tape firmly to the jar and it smoothed that tape right out. Done. Easy. Look at how fantastic this jar looks now that it's white and gold. It will be able to act as a gorgeous accent piece on several displays and easily be incorporated into all of my seasonal decorating. So let's talk about the price. Now our original piece was $109. Yikes, I'm not gonna pay that. But what I am willing to do is to find a piece that's $19.99 that has potential. This yellow jar was not the color that I wanted, but a little bit of paint is an easy fix. So we spent $19.99 on this. I spent $4 on the paint and we used about half of a can. So we'll say $2 for the paint. And then we just use a little segment of the washi tape. And so we'll say that was a dollar. So in total, this cost me $23. 109 minus 23 is 86. That's an $86 savings. And I think that mine is just as beautiful as the inspiration piece. Now I'm gonna show you how I displayed all of my things on my coffee table. So 
going to steep back a little bit. So we talk a little bit about it. Get over here to coffee table level. Coffee table level. Coffee table level. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Coffee table level. 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 <laughs> Should probably practice that. Can you say that five times fast? <laughs> All right, so I'm over here by the coffee table and I'm gonna talk about what is on it. We'll start off with these pretty velvet pumpkins with the gold stem. I purchased these at Bell's. They just look so elegant with that fabric and I love the gold curly stems. They're so pretty. Next to my pumpkins, I have this gorgeous, blue and white ginger jar. It is absolutely huge. Can you guess where I got it? <laughs> if you guessed home goods, you're right. I purchased this a couple weeks back and it was $69.99, which is a little bit of a splurge, but if you were to buy this anywhere else online or at a different store, it would be two to three times that price. So if you can find ginger jars at Home Goods, scoop them up because they really are affordable comparatively to other places that you can buy them. So next to that, I have, of course, our beautiful white ginger jar with the gold stripe. And then to the side, I have some pretty little navy blue pumpkins. I got these at Target. And again, I painted the stems gold to match my other pumpkins. And of course, down in the front center stage, we have our beautiful fall swag. I love the way this looks. It ties in all of the colors. It is a neutral piece. And for the price, I think it looks fantastic. This coffee table display is a classic and timeless way to decorate for fall. For when we moved into this house, it was semi-furnished. And some of the pieces that were left behind were not my style. So I just put them into a closet and they've just been there. So every now and again, I go through and I see what I can find that I feel like I can upgrade. Well, this vase right here was one of those pieces that was hiding in a closet that needs an upgrade. What it looks like before was something pulled out of the safari, something that's perfect for Florida. It looks like a gator but it's not going to coordinate with my style. Don't you worry, that's an easy fix. What I'm gonna do is I'm taking it outside and I'm going to spray paint it in some white gloss or stoleum spray paint. I made sure the entire base was covered in this white gloss spray paint. I let the first coat dry for one hour. Then I came back and did a second coat of paint to make sure that everything was completely coated in the paint and that there were no traces of the crocodile safari green original color left behind. Once it was all covered up, I let it dry completely, which took two hours. Already it's a dramatic makeover and the space is going to be perfect with so many different seasons, holidays, and decor ideas. Well, what we're gonna do with it today is we're going to add a gorgeous flower arrangement to it. Now let's go back to Hobby Lobby and rummage through their florals. They had a huge variety of fall florals and leaves out. And so I picked up these beautiful leaves. What I loved about these particular leaves is that they were pretty neutral. They're like a soft sage color. And I knew that they would be perfect for this floral arrangement. I also found a pick that had a pumpkin on it and some leaves that coordinated with my sage colored stems. So I got all those and I brought them home. So let's create our floral arrangement. We're gonna start off with some scotch tape. We're gonna make my tape grid. So I did two lines vertically and two lines horizontally with this scotch tape. We're gonna start off with my beautiful sage colored leaves. I took the stems and I bent them to the size that I wanted for my arrangement. And then I placed them inside of my tape grid. Next, I moved on to my gold sticks and I added those to the tape grid as well. Then I had these beautiful gold magnolia leaves. So I placed those in there. I really like the metallic sheen. It's going to add to this arrangement. Then I moved on to the white peonies. I had a few bunches of these that I added to the base 
And then I added a cream stem that had some feathers on it. And then finally, I placed my pumpkin stem right in the center. Oh, how I love this floral arrangement. It is so perfect for fall. Again, it's a neutral piece that doesn't scream, hey, it's fall in those jeweled tones. It's very subtle and I love the color palette. The pumpkin in the center takes it over the top autumn and the florals and leaves look stunning inside our newly upgraded vase. I love the size of this arrangement. It's very grand and is definitely a statement piece. Another Hobby Lobby score was this jar right here. I found it in the clearance section and originally it was $30, but it had been reduced down to $7.49, which was a fantastic deal for this beautiful jar. I love a good bargain. And what we're going to do to this jar is jazz it up just a little bit. I created an autumn decal and I had my Cricut maker cut it out in some removable white vinyl. I placed this decal in the center of my glass jar. I used my scraper tool to press it firmly to the glass. You have to make sure that all of the edges are stuck really well to the glass jar because when we go to add our etching cream, which is what we're going to do in just a minute, you want to make sure that each of the edges are sealed tightly to the glass jar so that the etching cream doesn't seep underneath. Once I had my decal in place, I got out my etching cream and a paintbrush and I painted on a thick layer of this etching cream. I added the cream to all of the exposed areas on this autumn design. You want to make sure that everything is covered in the etching cream. If there are parts that you missed, it will be really visible. So make sure that everything is covered up really well. I let my cream stay on the glass for at least 10 minutes. I've done it less time in the past and the design isn't as etched in there. So I leave mine on for at least 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes had passed, I am now going to save my etching cream. Yeah, I'm going to save it. So I got my paintbrush and I simply just scraped off that excess etching cream and put it right back into the bottle. You can save yourself so much money by simply saving your etching cream. I have had this bottle for years and I just reuse the etching cream over and over and over again. So once I had enough of the etching cream removed from my jar, I washed off the excess. Now I did use my gloved up hand to wipe it gently away. You're going to want to make sure that you wear gloves when you're working with this etching cream because it is a harmful substance. Once all of that excess cream was washed off, I dried it and now I can remove the removable vinyl. So I just pulled all of that vinyl off of my jar. I love the way that this looks. It's such a subtle design that you'd have to look for it. But when you saw it, you would appreciate how beautiful it is. We took a $7.50 clearance item that was pretty plain and boring and added a subtle fall detail, which makes it coordinate with all of my fall pieces. It's the little details that count when it comes to creating a successful display. After my very successful trip to Hobby Lobby, I thought I would stop at the Dollar Tree on the way home and I found these adorable acorns and pine cones ceramic pieces. I thought they were so pretty, so I grabbed a couple of them. The metallic copper that's on the pine cones and the acorns is not going to fit into this particular design. But again, that's such an easy fix. You can change anything to fit into your color scheme. All you need to do is get a little bit of spray paint which is what I did. I took my pine cones and my acorns outside and I sprayed them in some metallic gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the acorns and the pine cones were completely covered in the spray paint. Then I let them dry for an hour. I came back, I flipped them over and I spray painted the top of these pieces. Once they were completely covered in the paint, I let them dry for another hour. 
These cute little decor pieces are a wonderful addition to my glass jars. They add a subtle and beautiful element of fall. And finally, right here in the center, I created a printable and I added it to my mirrored frame. I kept this printable simple and clean. We have a lot of other things going on on our tabletop, so I wanted to make sure that this was a streamlined piece. Plus, I love this message and I didn't want many things to detract from it. If you like this printable, I will leave a link in my description box so you can print it off at home and have it for yourself. Other elements that I have placed on my tabletop are a marble riser, which I placed my etched jar onto. I also added another coordinating glass jar next to it, which I filled with the same Dollar Tree acorns and pine cones. I wrapped the glass beaded garland around the top of the large jar. Then I put this pretty little pumpkin on top of a cake stand. And then I added one of my mini pumpkins on top of a cupcake stand. And then I also placed some gold magnolia leaves in various places around the tabletop. I am so delighted with the way that this display all came together. It has an element of fall and autumn, a warm feeling, a very welcoming feeling. All of the pieces that we made today were extremely affordable and they look so high end. I'm not really into the spooky, creepy kind of Halloween decor. I'm more of a cutesy, elegant kind of decorator when it comes to Halloween. One way to get a glamorous look is to create a show-stopping centerpiece, which is what we're gonna do right here. We're gonna create this beautiful floral centerpiece, and we're gonna start off with a kitchen bowl. Yes, a kitchen bowl is going to be our container. If you have a kitchen bowl that's large around your house, grab it and use it as a container. Instead of floral foam, we are going to create our tape grid. I'm just gonna get some scotch tape and I'm gonna make two lines horizontally with tape and two lines vertically to create our grid. This grid will hold my flowers upright and in place. I laid out all of my possibilities when it came to what I was going to put into my floral arrangement. I had flowers, I had feathers, I had pumpkins, I had spiders, all kinds of things. I just laid it out so I could see exactly what I had. The color scheme that I'm going for in this arrangement is a lot darker than I typically use. Why? Because it's Halloween and those touches of black and dark purple are an easy way to theme it into Halloween. But I also wanted to keep it light and bright, so we're going to start off by using some bunches of white peonies. I bent the stem and I added the first bunch of peonies. Then I added the second bunch to the other side. By using these wider flowers, it's actually gonna make the darker flowers pop when we put them in. So having this as a neutral background, these white peonies is a great place to start. Next, I took some silver and white leaves that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. They were in the floral section and they were 50% off, which is a great deal. So I picked up a few of these bunches. I'm going to bend the stem to get them to the correct size that I want. And then I'm going to put them inside of my tape grid. I put one on one side, one on the other, and one straight down the center. Now we're going to bring in our Halloween colors. I purchased these purplish, bluish hydrangeas at the Dollar Tree. I got a few stems of these and I placed those in various spaces around my arrangement. Next, I have these feather picks. I have two black ones and two brown ones. I purchased these at Michael's and I really love the floppiness of these feathers. It reminds me of like what a witch would have in her hat, some floppy little feathers. So this is a great touch to add as a Halloween element to our arrangement. And then I also added some peacock feathers. 
To bring in a bit of gold to the arrangement, I'm going to be adding some of these gold magnolia leaves that I purchased at Michael's. I'm also going to be adding some other green leaves. I just place those sporadically throughout the arrangement as well. The final touch that I'm going to add in the center is a beaded spider web with a crystal black spider in the center. I caught this at Tuesday morning and I'm just going to nestle it right in the center so that the focal point of this arrangement is this beautiful spider. This centerpiece is perfect for Halloween. It has our Halloween colors. It has some unique touches with the feathers and with the crystal spider in the center. I would say that this is a very classy Halloween floral arrangement and not creepy at all. Let's move on to our cloches now. I thought a cloche would be a very fitting touch to a dining table, but instead of a tasty bite, we have put in something that just might bite back. I was looking for a long spider and I just couldn't find one anywhere. But when I was at the Dollar Tree, I saw this web that had a spider in the center that was just what I was looking for. All I did was I peeled that spider right off the center of the web. Easy solution. One of the accent colors that I'm using on my tablescape is gold. So we are going to paint our little spiders in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I took my spiders outside and I sprayed the top side of my spider I made sure that everything was completely saturated in the paint. Then I let it dry for about an hour. Then I came back, I turned my spiders over, I painted the other side, and then I let it dry for an additional hour. I wanted my spiders to hover ever so mysteriously in the center of these cloches. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some fishing line, I'm gonna tie it around the top portion of the spider, and then I'm gonna get some double-sided tape, put the double-sided tape on the end of the fishing line, and then press it right up into the protruding part of my cloche. You can't see the double-sided tape, so my spider looks like it's hanging by a silk thread. I just love the way that these look. These spiders are defying gravity. They are hovering ever so mysteriously inside of my cloches. For one additional detail, I took a cream ribbon and I tied it around the little knob into a bow and then I placed a paper gold web in the center. And then I placed everything on top of some marble cutting boards. These cloches fit into my tablescape in two different ways. The first, it fits into that dining room theme where we have a cloche that would go along with food. And the second, of course, is it fits into our Halloween theme. And one other thing about these cloches is that they're not too tall. So you can be sitting across the table from someone having a lovely conversation and you're not gonna let anything get in the way. I love the glow that candles add to a dining experience. So I wanted to add some candlelight to this dining table. I purchased these cute little pumpkin votive candle holders a couple years ago at Michael's. I haven't used them very often because as you can see, the original color was this orange that I didn't really love and it didn't go a lot with my color scheme. But of course, we all know that that's an easy fix. So I took my glass pumpkins outside and I sprayed them in the same gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the first side was completely covered in the paint. I let them dry for an hour. I came back, I flipped them over and I sprayed the other side. I made sure that these pumpkins were completely covered in this gold spray paint and then I let them dry for an additional hour. Now all I need to do is just add my little votive tea light to the center and I have a beautiful warm glow that I can add to my tablescape. Just by changing the paint, it made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. 
Another super simple DIY that we are going to do is we are going to change the stems on these pumpkins. We've been changing stems all season long. I've done it in all of my fall videos thus far. So this video would feel left out if we didn't do it to these pumpkins. Now I purchased these plush pumpkins at Target a couple of years ago. I got some extras. You never know when you're gonna need a gray and a navy blue pumpkin. So I purchased them in the hopes that I would use them in the future and today is that day. The problem with these pumpkins, of course, is the stem, but that's going to be an easy fix. To protect the actual pumpkin itself, what I'm gonna do is get some paper and poke the stem through the center of the paper. I wiggled the paper under the pumpkin stem. There were some areas that ripped, but that's not a big deal. All I did was I got some scotch tape and I taped up those areas. And I made sure that the tape was underneath the stem so that the entire fabric pumpkin was protected. Once I had the paper on all of my pumpkins, I took my pumpkins outside and I spray painted the stems in the gold Rust-Oleum spray paint, the same spray paint that we've used on all three of the DIYs so far to create a cohesion in color. Once my stems were completely covered in this gold spray paint, I let them dry for an hour. Once everything was dry, I simply just removed the paper from the pumpkin and it revealed these brand new stems. And as you can see, when you look up close, it covered up those pumpkins so well. No paint got on any of the fabric and only on the pumpkin stems. These pumpkin stems are perfect for my color scheme and you would have never known that they were anything other than gold. Now it's time for our individual place settings. We're gonna start off with a charger. These gold chargers are from the Dollar Tree. Everyone gets one of these. The next thing that I have is also from the Dollar Tree and it's one of these resin marble plates. I'm just gonna set that right in the center of our gold charger. Then we're going to use some paper plates. Yeah, we're gonna use paper plates. You can do that. You can mix in paper with glass or resin or plastic, whatever. These paper plates are fantastic. They are in such a cool shape. And I really loved the metallic silver that was on here. It coordinates so well with my marble plate. Next to that, we have a circular round plate and it has a beautiful gold trim along the edge. That's going in the center of our paper plate. Next, we have these absolutely adorable vampire teeth. I purchased these at Home Goods a long time ago, and they actually are place card holders, but we're gonna use them in a different way today. These are gonna go right in the center of my mini plate, and inside of our vampire teeth, we are going to put our napkin. I took a black napkin, which is a color of napkin that I don't typically use, but it fits so perfectly in with this tablescape. I put it inside of a gold napkin ring and I shaped it to look like a cute little bow. How adorable is this? This is a great way to kind of um, counteract the creepiness and the overall dark feeling of the tablescape. The bow makes it feel a lot lighter and classier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this right inside of my vampire teeth and the vampire teeth are going to hold my napkin right in place. And then of course we have to have our stemware. So we have a glass goblet and then a cut glass crystal goblet right next to it. And then I have my monogrammed B silverware. I'm using a white tablecloth, which is a great neutral surface to make everything else pop. Plus it keeps it light and bright. I added a gold runner in the center. I put a mirrored tray on top of the runner and then our beautiful Halloween floral arrangement goes right on top of the tray. To the side, I put our mini pumpkins with a newly gold stem and then also 
I added these cute little wood shoes. Look how cute those are. I got these at Target a couple years ago. So the pumpkins get one of these little wood shoes right in the center. And then we have our cloches on either side of the pumpkins. I placed my pumpkin candle holders around the table as well. The final addition to our dining room Halloween decor is some large velvet spiders. I purchased these at Tuesday morning a couple years ago. I put them on my trellises so they're kind of crawling up. It's a great way to add another Halloween element to this room. That way you don't just have your Halloween decor on the table, it also kind of travels over to this side of the room as well. I think this tablescape ended up to be so glamorous and so classy. I love the way that we use traditional elements and we mixed in those Halloween touches. I think this is a great example of creepy classy, don't you think? Creepy because we have our vampire teeth, we have our hanging spiders, we have the spider inside of our flower arrangement, but classy because we kept the color scheme fairly traditional, we kept the place settings traditional, and we didn't go over the top. If you're looking for a way to decorate for Halloween in a subtle and traditional way, I think we achieved that here in this tablescape. It's time for another episode of Did I Splurge or Did I Save? If you are new to my channel, this is a fun game that we like to play. I create three DIYs, and if I spent over $20 creating the DIY, then I splurge. If I spent under $20, then I saved. Pretty easy, right? Well, let's put your knowledge to the test and see how many you can guess right. We're gonna start off by creating a gorgeous fall flower arrangement in a large ceramic pumpkin bowl. So what do you think? Did I splurge or did I save? I splurged. Now I will show you exactly how much I spent after we're done creating this. I have seen some beautiful floral arrangements in pumpkins this season and I wanted to create one for myself. The problem was I didn't want to use a fresh pumpkin because I wanted the arrangement to last all season long. So my solution was to find a pumpkin soup tureen to replace a fresh pumpkin. This was such a great find. I found it at Ross and I don't need the soup ladle right now. So I'll just put that off to the side. Inside of my pumpkin terrine, I'm going to start off by putting some floral foam. Now, typically I do the tape grid method, but because we're going to be adding the lid later on, I need some foam in there so I can securely place the lid back inside. The florals that I'm using are from a variety of different places. I got some at the Dollar Tree, I got some at Michael's, and also at Hobby Lobby. One of the things that I'm going to be using are these little seed pod things. I remember them from the 80s. My mom had some flower arrangements and I would always pull them out and like use them as maracas and shake them around. <laughs> so they are fun to play with, but they're not the prettiest botanical. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray paint these little seed pods gold. I got some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I took a plastic cup and I poked the stems into the cup so they would stay upright. I sprayed these seed pods thoroughly and then I let them dry for 20 minutes. Now it's time to add my gorgeous flowers to my soup terrine. So I just simply took my flowers and I added them sporadically into the foam. I made sure that I spaced out the colors so they weren't touching each other. You don't want a big burgundy flower next to another big burgundy flower. So I spaced them out according to color and size. Once all of my flowers were in place, I took those gold seed pods and I placed them evenly in the front. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this pumpkin lid on the top. 
because I just love the way it looks. It's another fun element, so I really wanted to add it to this arrangement. I took some floral foam and I pressed it into the lid so that it was really tight inside. Next, I have three wooden skewers. I took some wire cutters and I trimmed the wooden skewers down to size and I placed them into the foam. Then I turned that pumpkin lid around and I placed it inside of my arrangement. I pressed it into the floral foam. The skewers that are poking into the lid are going to hold that lid securely in place. Once the lid was in place, all I had to do was add a few more fall leaves to finish off the look. Isn't this floral arrangement absolutely stunning? I am so excited to have this out all fall season long. And once Thanksgiving rolls around, all I have to do is wash it out and get that soup ladle back out and I can put some food inside. So it's a piece that's gonna be doing double duty for me. So let's break down the cost on this. We'll talk about exactly how much I spent. So the biggest cost was the soup tureen. I purchased it at Ross and it was $21.99. So that in and of itself was a bit of a splurge and do you wanna know a little secret? I actually bought two because what if I want chicken noodle soup and clam chowder? You've gotta have two, right? So the next cost was the florals and I'm going to say that I spent $10 on the flowers. And finally, we're just going to clump miscellaneous items together, the floral foam and the wooden skewers, as well as the spray paint. And we'll say that we spent a dollar on those. So in total, I spent $33 on this arrangement. I think that that's an okay price and it's definitely a splurge, but I would spend that money again to get this floral arrangement. What do you think? Do you think it was worth $33? Okay, are you ready for project number two? It's gonna be this framed fall art. This is in a gorgeous mirrored and gold detailed frame. Inside, I have some wooden leaves placed on top of some fall cardstock. So what do you think? Do you think I splurged or did I save? I saved. And again, I'll show you the cost breakdown after we're done creating this DIY. First up, we're gonna take some wooden leaves and we're going to make them shine. I got a package of wooden leaves at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to add some veining to my leaves to give them some extra detail. The first thing that I did was I simply just got a pencil and I traced some veining on the wooden leaf. I did two separate designs that were similar but not identical. Once the tracing was finished, I got out my wood burning tool. Now you can purchase wood burning tools at Michaels or at Walmart for $10 or under, they're really affordable. So all I did was I took my wood burning tool and I traced along the pencil markings on my leaf. You don't need to press hard, you just need to have an even motion and continue moving. If you do pause, it will obviously burn that area a little more than you would if you were continually moving. So just keep that wood burning tool flowing as you trace over those lines. It only took me a few minutes to burn these lines into both of these leaves. Now we're going to add a little bit of shimmery shine to these leaves. I'm gonna be using this Perla paint that I purchased at Michael's. It has a beautiful sheen to it. I got my sponge brush and I painted a light coat over each one of my leaves and then I let them dry for two hours. Now we're gonna add a little bit of shimmer in the form of some bling wrap. Now, originally the reason why we're gonna do this is because there's a hole in the top of these leaves where you can hang it up as an ornament, but I didn't want to leave the hole there. So what I did was I got a little teeny piece of that bling wrap 
and I placed it over the top of the hole. Then I added a few more sparkles sporadically throughout the leaves. I love the way that the gold sparkles add additional detail and interest to these leaves. So let's talk about this pretty frame. I loved the mirror edge and the gold detail on the inside. It caught my attention and I just had to have it. I removed the paper and the foam from the inside of the frame. As the backdrop, I'm going to be using some pretty cardstock. I had a whole book of cardstock. I selected the one that I wanted and tore it out. I got my Cricut self healing mat and my rotary cutter. I placed my cardstock down first, then used the paper that I pulled out from the frame as the template. I placed it over the top of my cardstock. I traced around it, then I cut it to size with my Cricut rotary cutter. Now I'm going to place my leaves on top of this cardstock. I got some double sided tape and I placed some pieces on the back of each one of my wooden leaves. And then I placed them on the left hand side of the cardstock. That way it didn't block the beautiful fall botanicals on the right hand side. Once the leaves were in place, I put my cardstock back into the frame. And now I have a beautiful piece of fall art that I can display during this autumn season. So let's go over the cost breakdown of what I spent to create this art. Again, the big cost was the frame. I purchased this frame at Ross for $8.99. Again, totally worth it. I will be able to use this frame again and again, so I think it was worth the cost. And the second part is the fall leaves. They were from the Dollar Tree. I only used two, so that's gonna be 33 cents. And then I'll group together the miscellaneous, which is the paint, the cardstock and the bling wrap, we'll say that those partials cost $1. So in total, this fall art cost me $10.50. Again, I believe it was totally worth it. And we definitely saved by DIYing this piece ourselves. Now it's time for our final project. You get one more chance to test your knowledge. Are you ready? I have these gorgeous acorns, a set of two, look at how large they are, with a beautiful gold top. So what do you think? Did I splurge or did I save? I splurged. And again, I will show you exactly how much I spent on these when we're done. And I will say this was by far the easiest project that we are gonna do of the day. So let's talk a little bit about these acorns. I purchased this set at Bell's. They are pretty plain, a boring brown, but we're going to paint a gold highlight to the top to really make them come alive. So I'm going to be using two types of craft paint. I'm going to mix them together. One is a little more flat and one has a sheen to it. I purchased both of these craft paints at Walmart. I took a sponge brush and I painted on the gold paint. I put the paint on the raised details on the top of the acorn. I painted on a fairly thick coat in the beginning because I wanted to make sure I got each part of the raised detail. Once I had on a fairly thick coat, I got a napkin and I gently wiped off the excess paint. This technique ensures that it's not too saturated in the gold paint. I continued doing this until each part of the acorn top was covered in the gold craft paint. Then I did the same technique on the stem by painting on the gold paint and then gently wiping it off with the napkin. Once I was finished with my first acorn, I moved on to my second and repeated the painting process. Once I was satisfied with the way that the gold paint looked on the top of the acorns, I let the paint dry for two hours. How easy was that? But look at the difference that it made. It took this from a plain brown acorn 
And now it pops. The paint highlighted the intricate shapes on these acorns, plus by adding a second color to this monochromatic acorn, it makes it so much more dynamic. All right, so now let's talk about the costs of what I spent on these acorns. I told you I purchased them at Bell's and each acorn was $12.99. So if you did wanna save, you could just buy one of these, but I like to buy sets, that way I can have more than one to decorate with. So that was obviously the big cost of this DIY. The paint, we're gonna say that it cost 50 cents because I really didn't use very much, and those were the only costs that went into creating these. So total price, to create both of these was $26.50, which I think is a great price because look at how beautiful these are. One of the things I love shopping for are the seasonal candles. This year I thought I am going to make my own. I found a super cute bowl and lid at Ross for only $5.99. I mean, how cute is this? And I knew it was going to be perfect for my candle. So this pumpkin bowl is item number one. Item number two are some candles, just plain white candles, that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two of these candles because that's the amount of wax that will fit into my pumpkin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get a pot full of water. Now this water needs to come to a very low boil or a simmer. It doesn't need to be a rapid hot screaming boil, but just warm enough that it will melt the wax. So once it was at the temperature that I wanted, I took my two candles and I placed them inside of the pot. It took about 20 minutes for the wax to completely melt and dependent on the size of your candle, it could take more or less time. But 20 minutes was the time that it took for these to completely melt down. Now that the candle was melted, I pulled out the wick. I wrapped it around a wooden skewer and placed it inside of my pumpkin. I did this with the second wick as well. I made sure that the wicks were both placed in the center of the pumpkin, equidistant from each other. Now that my wicks were placed inside of my pumpkin, it's time to pour in the melted wax. I used a hot pad to handle the hot glass container and I pulled it out of the boiling water. Then I slowly poured the wax into the pumpkin. I repeated this process with the second container of melted wax. Now we just wait for the wax to cool down and solidify. It took a couple of hours before I felt like I could handle the container safely. So let it dry for a little while, a couple hours should do the trick. And then I took some kitchen scissors and I snipped off the excess wick and trimmed it to the correct size. And that's it. How easy was that? Now you could add some essential oils or some kind of scent to your wax if you wanted to. I didn't have any fun ball scents so I just left mine plain. But I feel like my whole candle making world has just been opened up by doing this project. You could take any heat safe bowl and turn it into a candle. You could do this for so many different seasons. You could theme it to almost anything. If you had some extra bowls lying around the house, this is a great way to upcycle them. I guarantee you'll be seeing me do this again at Christmas time. And how affordable was this? I spent $5.99 on the pumpkin bowl and $2 on the wax. So a couple of bucks. And I absolutely love the way that this turned out. A second alternative for a fall candle 
is to take a candle that's already existing and just embellish it. I found this candle at Walmart. It was $4.98 and it is a mold cider scent, which is just so fall in my opinion. And I really love the yellowish orange color of the wax if it's in perfectly with autumn. So first off, we're gonna take the silver lid and we're going to paint it gold. I'm also going to get a knob. Now these knobs were original knobs that were on my kitchen before I did the kitchen remodel, so I have a whole bunch of these left over. I took both of my pieces outside and I spray painted them in a Rust-Oleum gold spray paint. I sprayed them thoroughly in the paint and then I let them dry for one hour. I'm going to be using some clear Gorilla Glue to attach the knob to the lid. I put some glue on the circular base of the knob first and added it to the center of the lid. And then I added some glue to the knob itself and added it to the center as well. Now that the lid is completely transformed, we're going to add a beautiful detail to the glass part of the candle. In my Cricut Design Space, I hit New Project. I clicked on Images. In the search bar, I typed in Pumpkin Damask. Several options came up. I scrolled down and I selected this pumpkin. I hit Insert Images. It brought it to my design space and I wanted three, so I hit duplicate. So I had three pumpkin designs and then I put them, as you can see, I put them right next to each other so that eventually it would create one large design. Once it was all put together, I selected them all and went down and welded it together. At this point, I could size it to the size I needed, so I selected it, I hit the unlock button, and then I typed in the size that would fit on my candle. Once it was done, I hit make it, and it sorted it, and I'm going to be doing it without a mat because I am going to be using a smart vinyl, a white permanent smart vinyl. So I selected smart vinyl permanent, and then I hit more on the pressure. I loaded it into my Maker 3 by hitting the flashing arrow button. It measures out your material first to make sure you have enough. Once it's done, I hit the flashing play button, which began the cutting process. When it was all finished, I hit that flashing arrow button again, and then it released my material and I hit finish on the computer. I weeded away the excess vinyl from my pumpkin design. Then I added the transfer tape to the top. I removed the backing from the vinyl and then placed it around the center of my candle. I pressed the vinyl firmly to the glass with my scraper tool and then removed the transfer tape. This was such an easy way to take a ready-made candle and embellish it. This would be a perfect gift. Again, this cost me hardly any money. It was super affordable and it's going to be a great addition to any fall display. I love looking through the Target dollar spot. They always have some great treasures there. One of the treasures that I found recently was this Magnolia Leaf Wreath. It was only $3 and I'm going to transform it by painting some of the leaves gold. Now I couldn't pull off the individual leaves because of the way they were attached to the wreath. So what I did was I got some butcher paper and I wrapped it around the parts of the wreath that I did not want to be spray painted gold. I pulled the leaves that I did want to be painted gold through the butcher paper and then taped the butcher paper around the stem. I took my wreath outside, I sprayed the exposed leaves in the same gold Rust-Oleum spray paint that I used for my candle lid and knob. I sprayed the leaves thoroughly, making sure they were completely covered in the gold paint. Then I let them dry for one hour, and finally I removed the butcher paper from the wreath. 
to add a little more fall sparkle to this wreath, I'm going to be adding some Dollar Tree sparkly gold leaves. These are fantastic because they have the little clips on the back, so it was really easy to attach these leaves to the wreath. I just put them on equally around the wreath, and I love the added dimension that it gives. The final addition is going to be adding a cream satin bow to the wreath. To attach my ribbon to my wreath, I'm going to be using some floral wire. I got a pair of wire cutters and I cut a segment of this floral wire and then I poked it through the center of the knot on the bow, twisted it around the bow to secure together and then I attached the floral wire and the bow to the wreath. Now that the wreath is all done, I'm going to add my pretty little pumpkin to the center. I love the way that this wreath highlights this pumpkin candle and adds a bit of extra flair to this display. We're gonna start off with this decorative urn right now. I have had it for a very long time and originally I got it at Hobby Lobby. I loved it. It's been loved, it's been used, and now it's been worn. So it's got a whole bunch of paint chips all over it. And honestly, I'm not really in love with the color anymore, and so I'm gonna change that. What I am in love with is the shape. It is a classic, timeless shape that will never go out of style. So let's go ahead and update it a little bit. What we're gonna do is first start off by painting it. I'm using some white gloss Rustoleum spray paint. In order to protect the inside of the urn, I'm going to get a foam plate and place it inside and then get some blue painter's tape and tape the edges. I took my piece outside and I sprayed it thoroughly. I got underneath this piece all around every single side, made sure that it was really well coated and then I moved on to the lid. I saturated it again in the paint so that none of the original color was showing through. Once both of my pieces were completely covered in the white paint, I let it dry for 30 minutes. Then I returned and did a second coat. Again, I made sure that each part of the decorative pieces were covered in the paint. Once everything was covered in the second coat of paint, I let it dry for three hours. I really liked the gold accents that were on this piece originally, so we're going to recreate that look. I'm using some metallic antique gold craft paint and a thin paintbrush. I painted the raised circles along the rim and on the bottom portion. Then I painted in the grooves on the base. Once I was finished with the lower portion, I began to paint the lid. Again, I put the paint on the raised circles around the rim, and then I moved on to the decorative finial on the top, and I painted this gold paint inside all of the grooves. The gold paint highlights those intricate details on this piece and makes those designs stand out. Now this piece is completely transformed. I just love the way that it looks. It's so classic and timeless. It will go with every season. It's a great addition to my fall display, but again, I can use it for summer, spring, fall, or winter. Last year, I got a green pumpkin in a Michael's grab bag and I didn't particularly love the color, but what I did love were these napkins that I found at Home Goods. This package of white and gold damask print napkins were only $2.99. They are going to be a perfect way to transform this pumpkin. We're going to be using some Mod Podge and these napkins to transform it. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is remove the stem from the top of the pumpkin. That way it's not in the way while we're Mod Podging. Now it's time for the napkin. 
I'm going to separate the two ply portion, the bottom from the top layer. So that way I'm just left with the top layer of the napkin. The reason why I do this is because it's much easier to apply one layer than it is to do two. I've done it before with both layers still intact. And what happens is you get some bubbling that gets trapped between the layers and then it kind of separates. So for me, I like to remove the bottom layer. So I'm just dealing with the one singular top layer for the Mod Podge. So what I did with these napkins was I put it at the top of the pumpkin and then I pulled it down to the bottom so I could measure how long I needed to cut my strips. And then I simply just cut those napkin pieces into long strips. Then I got my Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I added the Mod Podge liberally to the surface of the pumpkin. Then I took my strips placed them at the top and then laid the napkin on the pumpkin. I also pressed gently against the pumpkin so the napkin would adhere fully. At this point, I just continued to add those napkin strips to my pumpkin. I overlapped the pieces so that the edges would lay smooth. Once I was done adding my napkin strips, I let the Mod Podge dry for about 30 minutes. The reason why I let the Mod Podge dry in between coats is because the napkin is so thin, if you directly add the top layer of Mod Podge right now, there's a, a chance that it's gonna tear, the napkin's gonna tear because it's so wet. So I like to let it dry a little bit, that way there's no tearing when I go to add the top layer. So after the time was up, I got my top layer of Mod Podge and I put that over the top of the entire pumpkin. I made sure that everything was covered in the Mod Podge, then I placed it on a cup so it wouldn't stick while it dries to the foam plate and I let it dry for two hours. While the Mod Podge is drying, let's talk about the stem. The stem was okay, but I wanted it to be a little more fancy, so we're gonna add some of that same gold metallic craft paint to the stem. I simply painted the gold paint on the stem and then I wiped it off with a napkin that way it wasn't completely gold. By removing some of the paint, it makes the stem look more natural. And then I let the stem dry for one hour. Now that everything is dry, it's time to put it all back together. I poked the stem back into the original hole that was at the top of the pumpkin, and now it is transformed. The Mod Podge method is a great way to customize your pieces. You can get whatever color, design, or a themed napkin you wanted. This way you can make custom decor. Dollar Tree frames are great blank canvases. You can do so much with them. And if you don't like the final outcome, you're only out a dollar, so that's a pretty good deal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this white and gold Dollar Tree frame and customize it. I'm going to remove the glass from the frame and then I'm going to create a custom design on my Cricut Maker. I loaded some smart gold vinyl into my machine. It cut the leaves and then I added the gold vinyl detail to the upper portion and the lower portion of the glass. This vinyl detail adds a pretty sheen to the glass and this is a removable vinyl so I can take it off and theme this specific frame to another season or a party if I wanted to in the future. So now let's get on to the free printable part. I found this pumpkin printable online. I did not create it, but it is free. So I will leave a link to where I found it in my description box so you can print it off at home if you like it. I simply printed out this free printable and added it to my frame. This is such a cheap, easy way to theme some seasonal decor. I find free prints online all the time. So if you're on a tight budget, this is a great way to create some cheap seasonal decorating pieces. We're gonna take this Dollar Tree wood shape that is pretty plain and we're gonna dress it up. I'm going to add some veining to my leaf and I'm going to do it with a burn tool. I got this burn tool at Michael's. It was only $20.
To begin, I needed an outline, so I got a mechanical pencil and I just freehanded some veining on my leaf, which gave me a guide for when I use my burn tool. I began to trace out the lines evenly and slowly along the pencil line. Now this was just a guide, so it gave me kind of parameters to work in. I didn't always stay exactly on the line, but I did try as best as I could to stay close to it. I really enjoyed doing this. It was really soothing actually just to draw these lines in the wood. To highlight the veining that we've created on our leaf, we're going to use some Minwax Antique Walnut Stain. I got a sponge brush and I painted this stain on. And then I got a paper towel and I wiped off any excess to make sure that the paint was smooth and even across the entire leaf. And then I let it dry completely. To the center, I decided to write the word fall and I'm going to make this word on my Cricut. I created it and then I printed it off on some cardstock. To adhere it to my leaf, I'm going to use some double-sided dots that I got from the Dollar Tree. I cut those into little segments and placed it on the back side of the word fall. And then I pressed it firmly to the center of my leaf. Now this leaf needed one more little element, which was some sparkle. I had some leftover sparkles from the bling wrap that I used on my pumpkin last week. I cut single sparkles out and placed them sporadically throughout the leaf, which is just what it needed to complete the final design. Let's talk about free things. I love free things. And the goal on my channel is to provide you with inspiration on a budget. So to give you a free printable is just a small gift for me to you. If you want this printable, there will be a link in my description box so you can have it. I created this fall leaf printable and then I cut it to the size that would fit into my gold Dollar Tree frame. To the center, I'm going to add some leaves. I'm gonna stack them up. I'm gonna start with a wood leaf ornament. I stained it, I did both sides, and then I wiped off the excess and let it dry completely. I bet you'll never guess what I'm gonna use for the second, the middle tier. I'm actually going to use a leftover leaf that I had on my bowl. This little guy that was right there, I just peeled it off and it was already gold and I thought, you know what, this is perfect, it's thin, and it fit right on top of my wood leaf. So that is layer number two. Layer number three is a small wood sticker. Again, it's from the Dollar Tree and it was left over from another project. I'm going to paint it in this Martha Stewart Rose Copper spray paint that I got at Michael's. It's just a beautiful shade of rose, pinky rose and copper combined. I did a couple of coats of this and it looked so pretty and went so well with the rest of the fall colors in my color scheme. Before I stacked my leaves, I cut the stem off of the foam leaf because it wasn't gonna fit onto the wood leaf. Once that was done, I got some hot glue and I hot glued the back of the foam sticker and pressed it into the middle of the wood sticker. And then I got some hot glue and I put it on the back of the rose copper leaf and then I placed it in the center of the gold leaf. And then I put some hot glue on the back of the wood leaf and I pressed it to the center of my printable. And I just love the way that it looks. However, there was one small problem. There was a hole in that wood leaf that just was bothering me and it needed to be covered up with something. So I used another one of those sparkles from the bling wrap. I put it right over the top and it fit perfectly and covered it right up. Once everything was all together, I put it back into my sparkly gold Dollar Tree frame, and now I have a beautiful piece of fall home decor. Now I love thrifting because you can find such unique pieces there and they're usually pretty affordable. Luckily for me, I found one that had a flat front and a flat back, and it was only $2.99. After a good washing, I let it dry completely and now it's prepped to be transformed. The way I'm going to do that is with some Mod Podge and some beautiful blue and white floral napkins that I found at HomeGoods. 
These napkins are so pretty and they were only $2.99, which is a great deal. One thing that I love about Mod Podge is that it is so versatile. It can be used with tissue paper, it can be used with napkins, which is what we're doing today. I've used Mod Podge with wrapping paper and scrapbook paper, so Mod Podge is a great option if you're really wanting to transform something. My napkins are two-ply napkins, so I needed to remove the back layer. The reason why I'm doing this is because if I were to put the napkin on as is, that back layer is what would adhere to the vase, but the top layer wouldn't. And when I go to put the top layer on the outside of my vase, it would only adhere to the outside of the napkin and not to the back. So I needed to remove the back layer, which left me with the top blue and white floral layer. Also, another reason why I do that is because air can get trapped in between the layers, which would make your finished product look a little more wavy and get bubbles in it. So it's important to remove, when it comes to napkins, remove that back layer. I liberally painted on the Mod Podge with a sponge brush to the front portion of my vase. Then I got my napkin and I placed it carefully over the top of the vase. And then I smoothed it out. Because the napkin is so thin, it will tear easily once it's placed onto the wet Mod Podge. So use light pressure to press it onto the vase. Then once that was finished, I flipped it over to the other side and I added again a liberal amount of Mod Podge. I got my second napkin and I placed it over the top and again I used light pressure to adhere the napkin to the vase. I trimmed off the excess napkin around the edges so there was no overhang and the napkin would lay flat. I did have one small empty spot on my vase, which was not a problem. All I did was I took a little sliver of that napkin and I placed it over the top of that empty spot and Mod Podged over it. After I was finished, I let it dry completely, which was a couple of hours. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because that napkin is so thin. If I added the top layer on right now, it would just tear it right off. So it needs to dry and firm up before you put the top layer on. I liberally added a top layer of Mod Podge to the entire surface of the vase, and then I let it dry completely, which for me was overnight. And now it's ready to be filled with some beautiful blue and white florals. I love this transformation. This vase right here got an easy and affordable makeover that makes it look so high end. These plastic pumpkins are from the Dollar Tree. They have so many options there of sizes and shapes. I decided to go with a smaller pumpkin because they were going to be an accent piece on my display. So the first thing that I needed to do was pull out the stem. The reason why I'm pulling out the stem first is because when I go to adhere the napkins to the pumpkin, it will adhere smoother without the stem, without working around the stem. And so I pulled it out, it just slid right out. It didn't have to pull very hard, it came right out. I'm going to cut my napkin into strips for this pumpkin because the strips will lay flatter and adhere better to a curved surface as opposed to just one giant napkin. You'll have a lot of bunching and bubbling if you do it that way. So I cut my napkins into about one and a half inch strips. Now I did forget to take the backing off the napkin before I cut it. So save yourself some time and remember to remove that bottom layer before you cut it. Um, once everything was cut and I had my strips, I put the Mod Podge all over my pumpkin. Again, I used my sponge brush and I applied it liberally. Then I got my napkin strips and I started at the top and I smoothed it out towards the bottom. I did have some overlapping parts on the edges. It was okay, it looked fantastic. I'd rather have a little bit of an overlap as opposed to some pumpkin underneath that was shining through, so a little bit of overlap is okay. Once my pumpkin was completely covered, I moved on to my second pumpkin. I repeated the process of adding the Mod Podge and then adding the strips of napkin. Once everything was covered, I let these pumpkins dry 
again for a couple of hours because the napkin was so thin I wanted to make sure that it was completely dry before I added the top layer of Mod Podge. I brushed on a generous layer of that Mod Podge to the top surface of my pumpkins and then I let them dry overnight. To replace the stem I got a wooden skewer and I poked it into the original hole that the stem was in which gave me an access point so I knew exactly where it was and then I just pushed that stem right back in. And that's it. These were so easy and affordable to make and they will up the elegant factor on my display. To assemble my fall blue and white vignette, I'm going to start off with a white marble tray. I like using trays because it gives parameters to work in as well as it adds dimension and a slight height variation to the display. This beautiful white decorative frame is from Michaels and I created a subtle fall sign that coordinated with my display on my computer. I printed it out and I placed it inside of the frame. I like having some frames with some signs in it because it's a cheap, easy, and affordable way to theme a display. The next piece I'm adding to my display is a beautiful white geometric ceramic jar that I got it Tuesday morning. It'll add some extra height and heft to the back of the display. I found a blue and white chinoiserie jar at Ross. I simply just took the lid off and placed in some blue and white florals. I placed our gorgeous thrifted Mod Podge vase in the back and I put it on top of a box. Now if you remember we transformed this box in a previous video and it was a vase base. And now I'm using it as a riser to add extra height and dimension to the back of my display. I'll just put my vase right on top and it looks just perfect there. I found a marble pumpkin last year at Ross and I've been so excited to use it and this display is the time to get it out. I placed it to the right hand side of my display which anchors everything together. And then the final bit is to add the pumpkins, our beautiful Mod Podge pumpkins, and also some white velvet pumpkins that are from the Dollar Tree as well. Now this sign started out as a Halloween sign and I got it at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove that paper front. I'll take the corner and just pull it all the way off. The reason why I'm doing this is because it had a bow on it. So if I were to put paper over it, it would be lumpy and bumpy. My recommendation is that if you are changing a sign out and it has some embellishments on it, some sparkles, some glitter, some raised parts, just remove that part first so you can put the second paper on and it will be smooth. If you don't have any embellishments on, leave it as is, skip that step, and then you can just put your paper right over the top. Once the Halloween paper was removed, I got a piece of light grit sandpaper and sanded down the edges and the top just to make sure that it was really smooth. The black color of the sign wasn't gonna work for my fall decor either, so I'm going to spray paint it using this Rust-Oleum white spray paint. I did two coats to make sure that it was saturated and you couldn't see any of the black coming through and then I let it dry completely. At this point it's time to add a new sign. I found this pretty pumpkin sign online and it is free. Yay! We love free things. So if you like this printable I will leave a link to where I found it in my description box below and you can have it too. After I printed it off, I cut it into a six by six inch square, and now it's time to adhere it. I'm using Mod Podge and a sponge brush. I'm going to add the Mod Podge to the top surface of my sign. Then I'm going to carefully line up my paper sign so it's evenly placed on the center. 
Then I took my kitchen scraper and pressed the sign and paper together. The scraper tool helps remove any bubbles that may be trapped under the paper and it smooths it out. Once everything was adhered, I let it dry for about an hour before adding the top layer of Mod Podge. Again, I added a liberal amount of Mod Podge to the top surface of my sign, and then I let it dry completely, which was a few hours. It was so easy to take this Halloween-themed sign and transform it into a fall-themed sign. It was, of course, very affordable because all I did was like get that Dollar Tree sign, Mod Podge, and some paper. I really think that adding customizable pieces to your decorations make them look so much more high-end. Now, if you can believe it, this second project is even easier than the first. I found these high-domed cloches at the Dollar Tree. I just loved them probably because I love using cloches in my design. I've used larger cloches at Christmas time to put over my Christmas village. I've used cloches for my springtime decorations. I just love using them. I think it just makes everything look a little bit more high-end and classy. So I was so excited when I saw these. The only problem with these is the color. It's like a muddy brown color on the base and not really my taste, but that is an easy fix. We are going to change this muddy brown color into a beautiful gold. I'm using some Rust-Oleum Gold spray paint. I'm going to add two coats of spray paint to the base of these cloches and then I'm going to let them dry completely. To the inside of my cloche, I'm going to add some mini acorns that I found at Michael's. I'm just going to put it right inside the dome portion of the cloche and then add the base. I think that these cloches really highlight these acorns and make them look so much more substantial and beautiful. And now we're finished with our DIYs. Wasn't that a piece of cake? I think anybody could do those. Now that we have them, we're going to add them to our tiered tray. Now I made this tiered tray with two pizza pans and a planter. All of these things are from the Dollar Tree and the center pole is the stair spindle. I love having a planter at the top because you can change out your florals for the different seasons. In my planter this time, I'm going to add a few cream and kind of peachy orange colored flowers as well as some seasonal leaves and a few more fall botanicals. On this top tier, we have, of course, our Mod Podge sign. And I love the saying on it. It says, every year we fall for fall. And I love fall, so this is a perfect sign for me. Next to our sign, we're gonna put one of our mini cloches. I'm going to add it on top of a small cupcake stand. I like doing this because the elevation makes your eye move around a little bit more and it makes that cloche feel a little more substantial. I'm also going to add a few beautiful florals, some more leaves, and then I like to add a little bit of shine to my designs. And this is going to come in the form of some gold, sparkly, reflective pumpkins. It's gonna add the brightness and the sheen that we need. I also have a green pumpkin and then some wood leaves and an acorn. It seems like every cheer tray has to have a tassel. So I have my tassel right here, which kind of drapes from one tier to the other and just adds another element of fall. Let's start out making a stacked pumpkin topiary. I purchased three pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, a large foam pumpkin, a medium-sized velvet pumpkin, and a small plastic pumpkin. I needed to remove the stems from all three pumpkins because they were going to be stacked on top of each other. The stems came out really easily. Once everything was prepped, I wanted to paint the bottom pumpkin and the top pumpkin with some black Rust-Oleum spray paint. I placed the foam pumpkin out first and thoroughly coated it in the black spray paint. 
Next, I did the plastic pumpkin, and again, I spray painted it thoroughly, let them dry, and then I flipped them over and did the bottom portion of the pumpkin. I spray painted them thoroughly, and then I let them dry completely. We also needed a base for our topiary. I got this base at Michael's, and I'm going to put a stain on it. I'm going to stain it in an antique walnut minwax stain. I got a sponge brush and I brushed the entire base in this stain. Once it was completely coated, I got a paper towel and I removed any of the excess stain. I like to do this because I think that it brings out the wood grain a little bit more, plus it evenly distributes that stain throughout the entire base. Now it's time to jazz up these pumpkins. To the large foam one, I'm going to be adding some gold Dollar Tree tacks. I just simply took those tacks and I pressed them into the foam pumpkin. I spread them out evenly and I love the way it looks. It looks like this pumpkin has a bunch of little gold polka dots all over it. The middle pumpkin, this velvet orange pumpkin, I didn't change the color on it. I left it the same, but I am going to add some white and black swirled ribbons. I'm going to start at the center where the stem originally was. I'm going to add some hot glue in the center. I'll place the tip of the ribbon in that hot glue, and then I will wrap it around the pumpkin, right in that dip, right where the pumpkin kind of naturally goes in. That's where I'm gonna put that ribbon. So I'm gonna wrap it around my pumpkin. I'm gonna add some hot glue as I go. That way it makes sure that it stays on really snug and secure. I love the way that the ribbon makes this look and it just ties in that whole black, white, and orange Halloween color scheme into this center pumpkin. For my top pumpkin, I'm going to use a gold paint pen that I got at Michael's. I'm going to draw some zigzags on my pumpkin. I'll just go down and up and I spread them out about a half an inch apart from each other. I did it around the entire perimeter of the pumpkin. So in total, I had about eight zigzag lines that went up and down this pumpkin. And then this stem, do you remember how we pulled this stem off at the beginning? Well, I spray painted it in some gold metallic spray paint and it was so easy to reattach. All I did was I just poked it right back into that original hole and it slid in smoothly and then to the stem i'm going to add an orange bow and a gold paper spider web i'll hot glue those to the stem and now my pumpkins are finished now it's assembly time i want to be able to use this wood base again in another project so i didn't want to do anything permanent so my solution is to get some Dollar Tree Velcro. I cut about an inch and a half segment off of this Velcro. I put the bottom part in the center of the top of my wood base, and I put the other half of the Velcro on the bottom of my foam pumpkin. Now I can put them together and they will stick, but it's not anything permanent that I can't remove later on. To stack my topiaries, I'm going to be using a wooden skewer. Because these pumpkins are foam, it's really easy to take that skewer and poke them in. And they naturally had a hole where those stems were. So that skewer went right into the bottom of the foam one. I took the velvet pumpkin next and I pressed that on top of the foam one. And then the black one was the top and I just poked that right through. The skewer was the perfect size because it didn't poke out the bottom or the top and it holds everything up nice and straight. I'm also going to add a spider web and a sparkly spider that's hanging on to a gold spider web. I purchased this large spooky tree at Home Goods several years ago and it's one of my favorite pieces to decorate for Halloween every year. This year I'm going to make a banner. I'm going to use some Dollar Tree wood ornaments. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stain them. I'm going to use a really dark, rich, ebony, minwax stain. It's almost like a black. I got my sponge brush and I brushed the stain on the front side 
of my wood ornaments. Then I took a paper towel and I wiped off that excess stain. Once they were completely dry, I flipped them over. I repeated the process with my sponge brush and the stain. I painted that stain on there till it was really saturated and then wiped off the excess with that paper towel. And then I let them dry completely. Now there were five pumpkins in a package, so I had to come up with a five letter word. I chose the word spook. Not spooky, we're just spook today. <laughs> And so to create my letters, what I did was I used my Cricut Maker and some orange cardstock paper. I created the words spook in the lettering that I wanted on my Cricut Maker. I printed it out and I punched out those letters. And then I got some double-sided tape. I put the double-sided tape on the back portion of my letter and then I trimmed around it so you couldn't really see any of the excess tape that was on the sides and then I pressed those letters firmly onto my pumpkins. Again, I'm using something that's semi-permanent because if I wanna use these pumpkins again for another project, I have that option. I'm using some black and white twine to hang my ornaments. I threaded that twine through the stem of my pumpkins, and now my banner is finished. I hung it on my tree along with some cute Halloween ornaments of mummies and skeletons and bats, as well as some more of those spider webs and some large spiders. This banner is the perfect addition to my tree and I created it for under $2. Up next is a pumpkin planter box that again is from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to recreate it into a picture frame easel. I'm going to start off by staining it. I'm gonna use the same stain that I used before, the ebony minwax stain, the really dark, rich stain. I got a sponge brush and I painted the stain onto the pumpkin planter. From the back sides, I did the front. All of it was done with my sponge brush. And then when it was fully covered in the stain, I wiped off the excess with a paper towel and then I let it dry completely. To spookify this pumpkin even further, I'm going to Mod Podge on some spider webs. I'm going to create these spider webs out of some gold wrapping paper and a Martha Stewart spider web punch. You can find these online on Amazon and they were really fun to make. I just punched them out and super cheap. Great way to customize some seasonal decor. I trimmed up my spider webs into some uneven pieces of web so that they would fit on the front of my pumpkin. Then I got out some Mod Podge and a sponge brush. I painted a liberal amount of Mod Podge onto the pumpkin and then I placed the web into the Mod Podge. After all of my webs were down, I got a kitchen scraper and I pressed those webs firmly into the Mod Podge and then I let it dry for about an hour before doing the top layer. Again, I got my sponge brush and a liberal amount of this Mod Podge and I put it over the entire surface of this pumpkin. Now, if you haven't worked with Mod Podge before, don't worry about the cloudy appearance right now. The Mod Podge will dry clear. Are you ready for a free printable? I love free things. So I'm happy to share this happy Halloween sign with you. I'll leave a link to where I found it online in my description box below so you can have it too. I printed this sign out and then I added one of those gold paper spider webs to the existing spider web. I just put some hot glue on there and pressed the spider web right into the top just for a little extra bit of embellishment. You don't need to do this, but I thought it would tie in nicely with my decor. And then I put my paper sign into a Dollar Tree frame. And then I placed it into my pumpkin frame easel. To go along with my easy DIY Halloween pieces of decor, I also have some other items that I have placed on my foyer table. I have a witch lantern and on top of the lantern, I added some spider themed bows, 
some black feathers, and some fall greenery. I placed my lantern on top of a spider leg tray, which gives it extra height. I have a pretty little witch that's dressed to impress in a frilly lace dress. I added a cauldron in her hand, and to the cauldron I added a black crystal spider that is dangling from the edge. In the center we have our spooky tree, and you have already seen all the fun things that I've added to the tree. I placed my DIY Happy Halloween frame and frame holder on top of another one of those spider legged trays. I've also added some spooky spider webs to the base of the table and the cutest string of jar lights that you've ever seen inside. There are little teeny spiders. I got them at Target last year and at night they are just so eerie. It's a perfect addition to this table. And then I also placed a few spiders around the table as well. And if you've ever been to the Dollar Tree, you know that these vases come in a variety of sizes and shapes. So I selected this smaller size today for my votive candle holder. I also purchased some multicolored hot glue sticks at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use the gold hot glue stick. I wanted my leaves to be uniform and even around the entire perimeter of my vase, so I created a leaf template. I printed it off, I cut it into a thin strip, and then I used some double-sided tape to secure the paper to the inside of the vase. Now I have a removable guide so I will know exactly where to place my hot glue. I ran a line of hot glue along the leaf outline. I kept even pressure so the lines would be even and straight. Once I was completed with the first leaf, I twisted my vase and I moved on to the second leaf. I chose a variety of different shaped fall leaves. You can get creative with your designs. You can choose acorns or pumpkins or you could even write the word fall on your vase. Once I was finished creating my leaves, I just reached in and pulled out the paper template and voila! a quartet of beautiful fall leaves. To the inside of my base, I added a few seeds, and then I also, of course, had to add my candle, place that on top of the seeds, and then I put it on top of a wood candlestick to give it more height and visibility. I can imagine a whole army of these just running down the center of your Thanksgiving table, or you could put them on a mantle to beautify your mantle for fall, and the best part about these is they were so inexpensive to create. I spent a dollar on this vase, I spent a dollar on the hot glue, so for two dollars I have a beautiful piece of seasonal decor. I saw this metal sign at the Dollar Tree. I'm guessing it's a yard sign or a sign for your garden. And I knew it had, we'll say it had some potential. <laughs> So the potential began by removing the harvest sticker that was in the center of this pumpkin. I started to scrape away at it and it was really stubborn. It did not want to go anywhere. So to the rescue came my Gooby Gone. I sprayed a decent amount of Gooby Gone over the top of the sticker and then I let it sit for a couple of minutes. Then I got my kitchen scraper and I scraped that sticker right up Still had to push pretty hard and it begrudgingly came off. I removed the entire sticker and then I washed it off so I had a clean, dry surface. To transform the color on my sign, I'm using this Martha Stewart Rose Copper Spray Paint. I got it at Michael's. I took my sign outside and I sprayed a generous amount of spray paint onto this sign. I also painted the metal post. This paint is so pretty, it had a shimmery finish that glistened in the sunlight. I waited for about 20 minutes and then I flipped it over and I painted the other side and then I let it dry completely. I'm going to refresh the center of my pumpkin with some Dollar Tree gift wrap. I loved the diamonds that were in gold against the brown paper. It just looked like fall to me. So I took this wrapping paper and I cut out a segment. Then I flipped it over so the diamonds were face down 
and traced out the pumpkin design with a pencil. It was easy to trace out because it had a natural indentation where the sticker was originally. And then I cut my pumpkin to shape. To adhere my wrapping paper to my pumpkin, I'm going to be using Mod Podge. I got a sponge brush and I added a liberal amount to the surface of the pumpkin in the center and then carefully lined up the paper pumpkin so it fit directly inside the metal pumpkin where the sticker was originally. Then I took my kitchen scraper and pressed the paper to the pumpkin. This smooths out the paper and gets rid of any trapped air bubbles and then I let it dry for about 20 minutes. So just a little FYI, I no longer use this kitchen scraper for food preparation, it is strictly for crafting. So if you come to my house for dinner, feel confident that I did not use this to make your dinner. So now that this is cleared up, let's move on to the top layer. I added a liberal amount to the entire surface of the paper pumpkin with my sponge brush, and then I let it dry for several hours. To embellish the center of my pumpkin, I'm going to be using some wood stickers that I got at the Dollar Tree and a sparkly foam sticker that I got in a multi-pack at Michael's. I took those wood stickers outside and I decided to paint them gold to go along with the gold that was on the wrapping paper. I used some Rust-Oleum metallic brass spray paint. I sprayed the wood stickers really thoroughly. I let them dry and then I flipped them over and I spray painted the other side as well and then I let them dry completely. So smack dab in the center of my pumpkin, I'm going to hot glue that foam pumpkin. I really loved the color. It was a rose gold color that matched really nicely with the spray paint. Then to the sides and to the center of my foam pumpkin, I hot glued those gold wood pumpkins. And then finally, the metal pole coming down at the base of my pumpkin was too long, so I clipped it off and then I was able to place my sign inside of a votive candle holder with a burlap accent. So what do you think about this makeover? It was pretty good, right? Considering where we started from, I really love the way that it turned out. And the best part about these things is that you can customize them to your particular style or color scheme. I just happened to be at Michael's last fall when they were putting out the grab bags, so I got one. And inside of my grab bag was this cornucopia with beautiful florals. It was originally $80 and I got it for $4 and there were some other things in there too. It wasn't perfect. There were some vacant spaces where it looks like something had fallen out and the ends of the ribbons were a little frayed. But hey, those are easy fixes. That's something that I'm definitely willing to overlook because of this beautiful cornucopia. So to that vacant space, I added a burgundy colored hydrangea that fit in there perfectly. I trimmed up the edges of the ribbon so they were smooth and crisp and sharp. And then I also added a few more extra fall botanicals. Easiest DIY ever. And this was the inspiration in my color scheme. It had those pinky and copper tones that I carry through the rest of my DIYs. So moral of the story, if you're at Michael's, check and see if they have their grab bags at because you might just get an amazing deal. I'm gonna make a spiced cupcake because that is perfect for this time of year. Once my cupcakes have been completely cooled, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hollow out the center. So I've got this large icing tip, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna poke it into the center of my cupcake. I'm gonna give it a good twist, and then I'm gonna pull it out, and then I'm gonna take a knife, and I'm just gonna cut around the edge and just pop out the center. And then I can fill my center with some jams or jellies. I can put some nuts in it or some pie filling. In this case, I'm going to fill it up with M&Ms and some candy corn. Now that my cupcakes are filled with the M&Ms and candy corns, I'm going to put the tops back on. However, before I do that, I'm going to trim off the excess cake 
that was pulled out of the center and then I'll just be left with the top that I can pop right back on and then our cupcake is ready for icing. I'm just gonna make a swirl of icing around each cupcake and then I'm going to top them with whatever is spilled inside. So either candy corns or M&Ms and the plain ones are gonna have little pumpkins on top. What a fun surprise it would be to bite into a delicious cupcake and find out that the middle was stuffed with fall themed candy. Now it's time to display our yummy cupcakes. Now I have a variety of ways that I'm gonna display them on my table. The first one is to use this shelf. Now I just had this shelf and I love displaying things on shelves because it's more eye level so you can get a different view of the cupcake than looking just straight down on it. I'm also gonna be using these cute little cupcake stands. Now these have a beautiful scalloped edge. I got them from TJ Maxx. And then I also have these round ones that I got from Target. So using cupcake stands is another way to add a lot of interest and height variation in your display. And then finally, I've got these little chalkboard signs that I'm gonna be putting next to the cupcakes so you know what special surprise is inside. In the center of my display, I have one large cake stand, and then I'm gonna surround it by more of these little mini ones. And then I have this sign that says, autumn leaves and cupcakes, please, which just is a fun, whimsical way to remind your guests that they're having a fun autumn party with cupcakes. The last way we're gonna display our cupcakes are in these Dollar Tree plastic goblets. Now what I did was I just put some candy, the same candy that's inside our cupcake and on top, and that way when your guests have it, they have an easy way to hold their cupcake, and then they also have another sweet treat to nibble on. To add an extra touch of autumn flair, I am gonna bring in my wreath that I have made previously. Now our display table is finished and ready for guests. This was such an easy thing to do because the cupcakes were semi-homemade and the display was really simple to put together. I just used things that I had around the house. I'm gonna start off with a runner. I have this long lace rectangular runner, which is perfect for my long rectangular table. I like to use runners because it gives me parameters and a border or a frame for all the decorative pieces that I'm gonna put on top. I also like to do them a little more slender because then you'll have some room to put all of your plates and your other tableware and dishware around it. Also, it's nice to start off with a decorative base. On top of my lace runner, I'm gonna add my DIY riser. It's amazing what adding a few inches can do to a centerpiece. I'm adding a garland to the center of my table. I love using garlands because they are long and slender and they will really help to reinforce the long slender centerpiece that I'm creating. I'm also going to add some little mini lights to it. I love the sparkle that the little lights add, so I'm just gonna wrap those around the garland. And then I'm also going to wrap around the garland these little berry garlands that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now these were in the Christmas section. You don't always have to use Christmas things specifically for Christmas because it's gold. It's gonna fit in perfectly with so many other seasons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap this around the garland as well. It's gonna add a nice sparkle and sheen. And then also when I'm done adding my lights and my garland, I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna add some more fall leaves and some picks to really beef up the garland and make it really thick and lush. Next, I'm gonna add in these beautiful mercury glass rose gold candlesticks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the tall ones on the top, on the riser, and then I'm gonna put the medium ones on either side of the riser. I just love the warmth and glow that candles add to a dining table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these flicker flame battery operated candles to my centerpiece. I'm gonna put them on top of these mercury glass votive candle holders. But instead of placing them inside the candle holder, I'm gonna flip this candle holder upside down so that I have some extra height. And then I'm going to place them in between my large rose gold glass candle holders.
Now I've mentioned a few times that I have a beautiful magnolia tree in my yard. I've used the leaves in beautiful tall bases. I've used the white flowers in my centerpiece for an outdoor dining. And today I'm gonna to be using these seed pods. Now this is the time of year where they drop off the tree and they were all over my yard. So as I was picking them up, I thought, I'm gonna use some of these. So I saved 12 of the best ones. And what I did was I put them in a bucket and I added some water to it. And then I also added about a cup of bleach. Now, the bleach is very important because the bleach not only cleans it, but if there's any bugs or any other little critters in there, it will get rid of those. Because the last thing you want is a little bug crawling out of your beautiful centerpiece during dinner. So what I did was I soaked it overnight and then the next day I rinsed them off. I placed them outside and let them dry completely. And then I put them on a piece of paper and I got some gold spray paint. And I sprayed it a few coats of paint all over the seed pods. And then I came up with these beautiful natural elements. Look how pretty these are. I just love them. Now, if you don't have some seed pods in your yard from a magnolia tree, you could also use acorns or pine cones, whatever you have naturally around your area, those would work. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm going to scatter them evenly throughout my centerpiece. To add in a little whimsy and some Thanksgiving spirit, I'm going to use these ceramic turkey place card holders. Instead of using them as a place card holder though, I'm going to put in some Thanksgiving quotes. Now I just found some quotes that I really liked and I printed them off, cut them out, and now I can just put them inside of my place card holder. I think it's so important to be thankful and grateful, especially this time of year. So it's nice to have some sweet reminders scattered throughout our tablescape so that your guests remember the reason that we're gathered together on this wonderful Thanksgiving day. The final step is just to add some copper bows. This is gonna bring in a vibrant pop of color and some added texture and sheen. And then I'm also going to fill up my mercury glass large candle holders with water. And then I'm gonna add in some floating candles and then I'm gonna light them up, turn my candles on and everything will be done. Now I got this pumpkin at my local thrift store and it was only $2.99, which is a score. Because as you know, these pumpkins can get really expensive. So I was so excited when I saw that it was only $2.99. I'm gonna bling this pumpkin out with some gold bling wrap that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut this bling wrap into strips. I want to have thin lines of sparkle going down vertically around the entire pumpkin. I cut the strips into a variety of lengths. I removed the paper backing and then placed the top of the line of bling by the stem and then pressed the sticky bling firmly onto the pumpkin. I continued placing the strips of bling fairly close together. I wanted the entire pumpkin to sparkle and shine so I made sure that there was plenty of bling on this pumpkin. To the top of my pumpkin, I'm going to be adding a variety of ribbons and some tulle. I like using the loop and twist method when I make my bows. So I made several loops in my tulle and I twisted the ends and then created another loop. To secure the loops together, I'm using some thin floral wire. I cut a few segments a couple inches long and I wrapped that wire around the bottom portion of the loops and then twisted the wire together. I repeated the process of looping and twisting and adding the wire to my cream and chevron ribbon, and then I made one large loop out of my burlap and lace ribbon. My wire was long enough that it had some excess 
coming off the end after I twisted it. I did that on purpose because now I can combine all of these ribbons. I'll place them on top of each other and I can take that excess wire and twist it together, which secures all of the ribbons together to create one large ribbon. Now you may be wondering, that's such a nice bow, but how are you going to attach that to your pumpkin? Well, I have a trick for you. I'm going to get a thumbtack and I'm going to press it halfway into the pumpkin. And then with that excess wire coming out of the back portion of my bow, I'm going to wrap that around the tack. Once it's firmly around the tack, really tight, I'm going to press that tack all the way into the pumpkin and now my bow is securely attached to my pumpkin. I'm also going to be adding a floral pick, these beautiful cream florals, and I'm going to do it the same way with that excess wire. I'll just wrap that wire around the floral stem and it will stay in place. This thrifted pumpkin went from pretty drab to super fab. It was only $2.99 at my thrift store. I spent $1 on the bling wrap and the rest of the supplies I had. I had the ribbon, I had the floral pick. And so for a total of $4, I was able to get something that looks so high end. Now I have seen votive candle holders like this online and they are a pretty penny. But we are not gonna spend a pretty penny. We're gonna start off with a glass vase that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to get some rubber bands. I got a variety pack of rubber bands that had different sizes. I put the rubber bands on my vase in no particular order. I just placed them on there. Some were close together, some were a little more spread apart. I even did a few that were diagonal. Just no rhyme or reason, however they fit on your vase, just stick them on there. Once I had my rubber bands on my vase, I took this outside and I used some gold metallic spray paint and I sprayed some coats of paint on the outside of the vase and then I let it dry completely. Once it was dry, I took the rubber bands off and in this picture, it looks like there's paint chipping off of the vase, but it's not actually chipping off of the vase, it's coming off of the rubber bands. So if that happens to you while you're doing this, don't get nervous, it's just coming off of the rubber bands. It's stuck to this vase really nicely, the paint did. To spruce up my votive candle holder even further, I have a grapevine wreath that I got from the same thrift store that I got the pumpkin at. It was only 99 cents and I decided to add some fall botanicals. I had some cream florals and some fall leaves. What I did with these was I just poked the stem into the gaps that were on the grapevine wreath and they stayed really nicely in place. There were some leaves that weren't that secure so I did get another segment of that floral wire. I wrapped it around the leaves and it attached it nicely to the grapevine wreath. Then I simply took my gold votive candle holder and I placed it in the center and then I got a battery operated candle and put it inside of my glass vase. And it just looks so high end. I cannot believe how fantastic this is. I only spent a dollar on the vase a dollar on the rubber bands and 99 cents on that grapevine wreath and then I had everything else. So for, we'll say three dollars, I got a beautiful fall votive candle holder that looks stunning in this grapevine floral wreath. The Dollar Tree has such a wide variety of wood shapes. I selected this wood pumpkin and it's going to be the base for my sign. The first thing I'm going to do is get some spray paint. I chose a chiffon chalk paint and I'm going to spray the front of this pumpkin. I'm going to make sure it's really saturated, let it dry, then I flipped it over and I painted the other side. 
The reason why I painted this pumpkin is because I wanted it to be one solid color. I'm putting some vellum paper over the top and there are portions of this paper that you can see through. So I wanted to make sure that everything was cohesive underneath. This vellum paper is from Michaels and it was 69 cents a piece. I got two. And what I'm going to do with this paper is I'm going to Mod Podge it on top of my pumpkin. One piece wasn't large enough, so I needed two. I taped them together, placed my pumpkin on top of the paper, and I traced it out. Then once I had that shape, I cut it out. Then I removed the tape, so I had two pieces. Next, I got a sponge brush and my Mod Podge, and I added a liberal amount to the surface of my wood pumpkin. Then I got my vellum paper and I placed it carefully on top of the pumpkin so that it would line up perfectly. And then I got that second piece and I made sure that the design lined up perfectly. Then I got my kitchen scraper and I pressed the vellum paper firmly to the pumpkin. Using a kitchen scraper gets any of those air bubbles out and make sure that the paper is really smooth and flat against your surface. I let the bottom portion of Mod Podge dry for about an hour and then I put the top layer on. Again, I added a liberal amount to the entire surface of the pumpkin and then I let it dry completely. To tie my pumpkins together, I'm going to use that same white tool that I used on my thrifted pumpkin. I'm going to wrap it around the stem of this pumpkin and simply tie it in a bow. For an added bit of pizzazz, I'm going to get a hair bow. Yes, it's a hair bow. And I found it at Hobby Lobby and I used my 40% off coupon so it was really affordable. What I'm gonna do with this is that it has that clip, that little clamp. I'm going to clamp the metal piece right to the center of my bow and it will stay in place. In the center of my pumpkin, I'm putting the word thankful. This came from the Dollar Tree and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray paint it gold, the same gold that I used on my votive candle holder. That way again, it ties my whole design together. I sprayed a thick coat of paint over the top of my thankful sign and then I let it dry completely. To attach my thankful to my pumpkin, I got some hot glue. I added hot glue to the back of my wording and then I placed it in the center of my pumpkin. I love the message of this pumpkin. Fall to me evokes gratitude and thankfulness. And so this pumpkin is a great reminder for us to be thankful. This pumpkin was just as affordable as my other decor pieces. I spent a dollar on the wood shape. I spent about a dollar 30 on the vellum paper. I spent about 350 on that hair bow and a dollar on the thankful sign. I'm rounding, I hope that that's okay. But we'll say that around $7 was the cost for this pumpkin, which I think is a great price to get something that just looks so pretty. Now I like incorporating elements into my design that I already have, that way it saves me a lot of money. For instance, I'm gonna use this cozy knitted blanket in place of a tablecloth. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread it on top of my island, and then I'm going to tie the corners on each of my sides with a fall organza ribbon. Now, not only will this ribbon bring in another touch of fall, but we will help it from sliding off my island and it will keep the blanket in place. Now, I love using signs in my designs. I think it's the easiest and most impactful way to make a statement or to theme a design. And today I'm gonna do Spice Spice Baby because we're doing all things pumpkin spice. Now this is so easy to make, I just made it on my computer, I printed it out, and then my sign has a metallic front. So I just got a magnet and I put the magnet onto the paper and it stuck right to my sign. And now I have a perfect sign to theme my design. I got these square glass box candle holders at Target. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open it up and inside I'm gonna place these orange glass votive candle holders. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place them upright and I'm gonna stick them inside of my box. And once they're inside my box, I'm gonna put the lid back on. But this time, instead of having the candle holder part 
to be upright. I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna place it on top. That way I can put other things on top and make this more of a display item. On top of my glass boxes, I have these mini glass milk bottles with a gold bottom. They are so cute and they are gonna be a perfect way to display my festive marshmallows. Inside of my little milk jugs, I'm gonna put in some marshmallows on a stick because you have to have marshmallows with hot cocoa, right? Now, all you need to make these are 12 large marshmallows, some orange coating chocolates, a variety of festive fall sprinkles, and 12 wooden skewers. I poked my wooden skewer into the center of each of my large marshmallows. Then I dipped the marshmallow three-fourths of the way into the melted orange colored coating chocolate. I tapped the skewer against the glass to remove any excess coating chocolate and then dipped my marshmallow into the festive fall sprinkles. I placed my finished marshmallow into some styrofoam so they could dry upright. These fall themed marshmallows are such an easy way to add some extra pizzazz to your hot cocoa bar. Once my marshmallows are completely cool, I'm gonna add them to my milk jugs and I love using these because they bring in such a vibrant pop of color of fall. And then also to go along with our marshmallows, I found these pumpkin spice marshmallows at Walmart and it's a fun alternative to a regular marshmallow. Now I like having something to munch on when I'm sipping my hot cocoa, whether it's a muffin or a donut. In this case, my kiddos really wanted these soft sugar cookies. And so with the bright orange icing and the coordinating sprinkles, I thought it would be a perfect addition to our cocoa station. I got a set of eight of these cute little cups at Home Goods. I loved the design on them and they were only $3.99 and they come with lids and they also come with some sleeves that say pumpkin spice and everything nice. Now cups like these are a great alternative to mugs and they will also keep your hot cocoa nice and warm. I found these spice stirring sticks at Target and they're gonna be perfect for my little table. I'm gonna set it inside of these little glasses over here. And then the finishing touch are these little pumpkin patch napkins. Now these were also from Home Goods and they were $2.99 and they're gonna fit in nicely with my theme. Now that our beverage station is all set up, it's time to add our drink. Now this is so easy to make. You literally just have to put all of your ingredients in a crock pot, turn it on low and cook for three hours and just stir occasionally. I also like serving my beverages in a crock pot because it's really easy access for all of your guests to get their drink and you don't have to worry about a hot stove. Well, here's our finished look. Our beverage station is complete. This would be such a fun way to usher in your guests to a party. It would also be a great idea for a late night snack. 